So welcoming Professor Dominic Cerulac, his first ever event so as an EPIC member, but so many good friends. Jus is here, Lamir is here, So is here. Thank you very much for keeping coming to these fantastic meetings. Uh, welcome everyone. Foco! Oh my god, Foco Vieringa is here. Hey Foco, Slava also from Air Photonics. Good to see you. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's start. Welcome to the EPIC online technology meeting on in vivo imaging. So we are extremely happy with this concept. Anna, Francesca, Sana have been working extremely hard on scouting the technology, the ecosystem for already 31 topics. We're organizing 31 meetings in something like seven weeks. It's been crazy hectic for us. We do our best to make sure that during these complicated times, you got the best out of the epic life. Hi guys. We are in the meeting number 12. Well, today we are talking about in vivo imaging. The reason we are so happy is that today we are welcoming also our innovation manager, Antonio Raspa. He is going to be the guy who is illuminating the path towards the industrial relevancy of all the technical work we do at the Epic Technology meetings. Uh, we are now 550 members, uh, keep growing. 554, I think, was today the statistic. Please keep supporting us because with your money, we are doing fantastic, fantastic things. Like, for example, when we go back, when the situation goes back to normal, when the virus thing is something for the for the our grandchildren to talk about, uh, we are going to have lots of present meetings. We go back to the road. I want to go back to travel 250 days a year if I can, but we have now already planned for Q4 uh, meetings that are on fiber sensors, on 3D printing. We have a meeting on 3D printing at Siemens, or for example, meeting on medical devices at Philips in Eindhoven. We try to make sure that you keep meeting your suppliers, your customers, and your future partners at this particular event. So please keep them in your agenda. And do not forget the one at Philips is going to be fantastic. And also, because you keep supporting us, you keep giving us budget, we managed to increase the amount of market reports in our extranet. So most of you, I think actually all of you are Epic members, Please make sure that you check the extra net from time to time. We have now 17,000 market relevant data, graphs, view graphs for you to use. So uh, you cannot go through all of that, but that's why we have a technical team. So if you have any question about the market, please ask us and we'll make sure that we direct you for you to get the, the right market report out, out of all these market reports that let me stress they are for free for you. But of all of those, I would like to highlight one. Uh, we are extremely, utterly happy that we managed to buy this market report. This is the a strategies unlimited worldwide market for lasers. Anything that has to do for laser-based manufacturing all the way to medical devices, medical lasers. This is a, a very expensive market report, which we got and is for free for all of you. So please make sure that you check this uh, worldwide market for lasers strategies unlimited. It's something quite unique that we managed to achieve. And one more thing. We have now the biggest, the biggest website for finding a job in photonics, www.jobsinphotonics.com. So if you're either looking for employees to fill your vacancies or you are looking for a job, uh, please go to this website. We have scouted actively the open position as at the 500 members of Epic, 554 members of Epic. We have put them there and we are going to different, different places to find talent for you to fill these openings. We are extremely excited to do this for the worldwide industry, but always with a European accent. And today, today is in vivo imaging. Uh, over the last seven years, uh, it was Foco Vieringa who really initiated this in Epic. He had the idea that Epic should be a forum for medical doctors and technology developers to meet and discuss. And since then, every year we've gone to a different hospital in Europe. We've gone to the Erasmus MC, to Maastricht MC, to, we went to Paris. Uh, we also went to the uh, Anthony Bellovenhoek Hospital in Amsterdam, meeting these communities. And we have learned a lot, but also we managed to engage into different activities for the roadmap towards bringing to the market new photonic solutions. So today we have a summary of those. I want Anna, or one of our experts in integrated photonic manufacturing, to tell us what's in the menu today. Anna, what do we have today? Thank you very much, Jose, for this nice introduction. I am very excited today for the list of companies that I have in front of me. So, yes, the goal of, this, uh, of today, of this meeting, is to find uh, new collaborations, new businesses between the uh, companies that are participating in this meeting. 
And well, what we need for having a, a good in vivo imaging system? Well, we need lasers. So for that, we are going to have a presentations a, from Optores, a, but also from Modulite. A, we have a, what, what we need for some a, applications we need, a specialty fibers. So we are going to have the presentation of art photonics a, and a lot of discussion. Also, we have another kind of a, components, coating filters, a, light sources, a, wavefront sensors. Um, also, we have the system integrators uh, that are able to design or prototyping on go to production, such as uh, iMEC. Uh, also, uh, I would like to highlight uh, our new uh, pilot line for uh, medical devices, uh, MedFab. Uh, if you want to do something very small, we, have, we will have also photonic integrated circuit companies that can offer uh, solutions uh, for the miniaturization. Um, and also uh, between these uh, system integrators, we have skin imaging instruments uh, such as uh, uh, ST in vivo, but also scan or that uh, will be talking. Uh, and also I am pretty sure that the, the guys uh, from R&D uh, and research are going to find this uh, very uh, helpful to find uh, suppliers, but also for the other companies to, to see what is going on uh, in research in, 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 in vivo imaging. Uh, and don't forget uh, sensor cameras, microscope manufacturers. We are going to have the, the talk from uh, talks uh, from Pair Labs, uh, Xenix and Prospective Instruments. And well, in terms of connectivity and industry 4.0, uh, we, we can have a uh, Huawei. Uh, so that's all from my side. Uh, Jose, do you want to add something? Yes, uh, Anna has been doing a lot of work with the European Commission to make sure that manufacturing of photonic devices is enabled in Europe with the taxpayers' money and with the support of Photonics 21 and the Photonics PPP. She is the R&D manager at EPIC. So not only for medical devices, but for any technology that you want to manufacture and you want to ramp up to volume, she is the person to contact. Uh, thank you for talking about the supply chain. We have a really fantastic agenda, but I would like to say that this is just the agenda of speakers. What's important is that every one of you is participating in the meeting. You are all going to get the chance to speak and also to answer the epic question, which is what can you do for them and what can they do for you? And finally, we are live in YouTube, so smile a lot. Uh, I would like to also remind all the people in YouTube that you can post your questions in the chat, but also you have further questions or you want to contact any of the participants today, all you have to do is to send me an email, jose.poto at epic-asoc.com, jose.poto at epic-asoc.com, and we'll be introducing you to any of the participants. That is valid for the people in YouTube, but also for the participants of the meeting. We only organize this because we want you to engage with each other. And with this, why don't we get the rock star to, to let us understand what we are here today. I have a very special friendship with Poco Vieringa, with Dr. Professor Vieringa. Thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. It means the world to me. You have been initiating this and now the medical market is first have the strongest market at Epic and that's thanks to you. I would like Foco for you to take the floor and the attention of everyone. Okay, thank you, Jose. You're giving me too much honor here. Uh, let me start with sharing the screen. Share screen and let's do the PowerPoint. There we go. Share. Can everybody see this? Yeah, okay. Well, um, I have been working for, a, a, well, a long time is maybe exaggerated, but for some time in, in uh, spectral imaging. And I always wanted to make this available for surgeons because there's more than the eye can see. And it is very useful if there's people that are fumbling around in you and trying to repair you. So years and years ago, I started with, um, in 2007, with a very primitive but stereoscopic multispectral imaging tool that was in Erasmus MC and I still worked at TNO and uh, where I also was a colleague of Jose. But now it's 2020 and have we been moving on? I think we have. I now work at IMEC and also have an associate professorship um, in medical technology in Maastricht UMC. And there I met the nice firm IMET Technology who is making very interesting high quality near eye displays. That was the stuff I was always missing. I never had a near eye display to do this stereoscopically, but here they, these guys are, they make it very small. 
So with this, it started to get interesting to make surgical stuff wearable. So where are we now? We, we have a platform which enables us to have a full electronic chain of a stereoscopic um, head-worn microscope. Um, we have one in the, uh, in the visible range, RGB, just visible, that's nice. That is already something that surgeons are amazed of because they can share this life with other colleagues, but we're also working on making this multispectral and that's what we have already now as well, RGB plus near, and then later on hyperspectral. So what we wanna do is we wanna profit from the roadmap that is squeezing more and more spectral performance into the same small package. And that's done by IMAC together with some partners. I see uh, that Mark is there. Well, um, and there's more partners uh, that work on camera technology with iMac and um, I think there's a big future in there. But it's not only for live surgery, but also for remote education. You can share other screens and other ORs or you can even have students now with the COVID crisis that are profiting by looking through the eyes of the surgeon while having deaf perception and seeing exactly what the surgeons can see remotely instead of trying to peer over their shoulders in the OR. We cannot do that now. We have, we have the COVID situation, but we would still be able to educate these students there. And later on, when we can fill big rooms again, then we can also do this in college situations. What can you do with multispectral and hyperspectral imaging? Well, doctors, can see stuff that is normally not so well discernible with the normal vision. One very uh, knowledgeable uh, example is vascular structures. You can enhance these with um, multispectral approaches. Um, we want to bring this in the, not only for dermatology, but we want to bring this in the OR, which we're doing in Maastricht, and I hope this is viewable through the photos for everybody, but we are having an attract phase one project finishing this now, and we are looking for partners for a abstract uh, that we want to submit a proposal for attract phase two. We still have a lot of time for that, and we're looking for consortium partners that want to help us to submit a proposal for attract phase two. That's all I can contribute at the moment in three slides. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Foco, for a, for a great presentation. Thank you for uh, keeping position in the industry. You are working at IMEC, and I know IMEC is uh, doing a lot of work on bringing hyperspectral to the consumer market. Uh, would you want to focus on the, on the medical side? What can the others today, you had the whole supply chain as Anna presented, what can the others do to help you? Or how can you help the different companies that you have in front of you? Well, um, of course, it's always interesting for us to have uh, light sources that are very compact, uh, not getting too hot, and can deliver a lot of optical power in, uh, in the right bandwidths for us. Um, for instance, uh, we're looking for uh, strong excitation sources, narrow banded in the near infrared for fluorescence uh, surgery. That is one thing, it, it, it never is strong enough, it's never small banded enough, it's always, uh, we always need more power, although we want to just then slow down, the, the, make the pulses smaller so that we can have a better contrast ratio and still have enough power to go over the surgical light. Surgical light is about 200,000 lux and we don't want to shut off the light, we want to keep it on, that's quite uh, an ambitious thing. With modulation I think we can go there, but we need very strong but very compact and efficient sources. I have two people in the room who are developing lasers today, but uh, one of them in the, in the field of medical, Lisa Laser has been actually making quite a big impact on bringing different lasers for the, for the uh, in vivo imaging market. Samir, thank you very much for being here this afternoon. Thank uh, you, uh, thank you very that, much. Um, auto, a meeting like this, what kind of connections are you expecting and hopefully what kind of follow-ups would you like to do afterwards? Um, for, for me, it's definitely interesting, this uh, in vivo uh, multispectral imaging. Um, and um, we are clearly uh, interested in maybe also combining uh, um, two micron surgical lasers uh, with, with, with a, let's say, uh, imaging module. Uh, so if there is any uh, interest in this, let's say, uh, 
direction. Uh, we are definitely open uh, to, to also uh, do some experiments with our lasers uh, for, for, for surgical uh, ablation of, of soft or hard tissue, uh, which is definitely capable by, by our laser systems. We also have uh, all the way, it's a, sorry, Foko, you want to say something? Yeah, well, uh, uh, it is an interesting point that you make uh, for um, not only seeing things, but also interfering with them. So uh, also um, ablating tissue, for instance, that is always uh, an interesting thing to, to use first the visualization uh, selectively and then selectively also ablate. And that is the dream that the surgeon would have to, to tune the laser wavelength to the tissue that wants, that he or she wants to a blade. Yeah. Uh, there's a company in Epic on the way in Finland. It's called Modulite. And for me, what thing that Foco, one thing that for me was amazing from from Modulite is that this they are actually they, they make their own their own growth, their own wafers, and they go all the way vertically integrated, all the way to develop donkey solution for the clinicians. And you actually see Modulite product directly served to the clinicians. Uh, so I thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. From the presentation from IMEC and from all your experience, what is the perfect scope for this meeting and what kind of connections would you like to do? Thank you for the introductions. Uh, it was very interesting talk. Uh, I think as well, if you don't know, we provide lasers between 400 and 2000 nanometers. So if the near infrared range kind of fits your application, there might be some interesting ways that we could maybe continue the discussion. Of course, with a bit more information on what are the high power uh, requirements and the form factor that you would be looking for. But we are certainly interested in, uh, in vivo imaging and especially fluorescence imaging. We have some experience on that area, so it would be very interesting to hear more. You know, they would think for going a meeting like this, if we got the laser manufacturers, maybe we can go up in the value chain, you have companies that you're gonna hear later, like prospective instruments that can actually have a very good track record in providing already solutions for the for the medical sector. Foco, thank you very much. And this is this shows. What a great meeting we have in front of us. I think there is a lot of opportunities to make very good connections and to get actually solutions for reaching the market. And that's what the next presentation is about. You see, it's a hero. You see put together a whole supply chain to make manufacturing of medical devices being sponsored by the Photonics 21 and the Photonics PPP through the MedFab pilot line. You see, what do you have between your hands now? Hey, uh, thanks. Uh, so I'm very, very happy to participate again. Uh, excellent seminar arranged by uh, EPIC and uh, I'm now uh, coordinating this uh, MEPFAP initiative to establish uh, this uh, photonics pilot line and uh, uh, which is dedicated on, on medical diagnostics. So uh, very recently started, but um, I have a couple of slides. So let's open you share with us uh, yes uh, yeah i'm in about business. to start them um it's a beautiful beautiful could logo. you uh, confirm can can you see we can see crystal clear the floor is yours uh, okay thanks thanks a lot uh, yeah so i i'm uh Jussi Hiltunen and uh, uh acting as a research professor at vtt technical research center but here i'm i'm uh, uh, presenting uh, uh, medfab and uh, uh, the purpose of this activity is really to help companies in medical uh, device development uh, background. First, it has been identified that delays in product development are uh, uh, quite a uh, bit uh, uh, delayed by the heterogeneous nature of photonics and then fragmented offering of, of the manufacturing companies. And secondly, uh, regulatory compliance is highly demanding and especially for SMEs launching uh, the first product uh, to market. And uh, um, so Metfab is not the only a, a pilot line. There are uh, 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 several others in, in photonics, but the concept that differentiates Metfab 
uh, MedFab from the other ones uh, uh, and available services. Uh, 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 it relies on open access model fo uh, focusing on the high impact medical application domain and uh, accelerated production. Uh, so we are a consortium of 18 partners and depending on the customer needs and required technology readiness uh, level, uh, the work can be distributed uh, between ISO 13485 certified companies, so uh, who, who can do the fabrication under uh, under a, a medical certificate or between uh, uh, research organizations. And uh, the orders uh, uh, for the pilot uh, production line are made in a centralized manner and then channeled uh, to manufacturer that uh, has the best implementation uh, capability. And the uh, idea is that uh, this model is supported by modularized fabrication and uh, established uh, production uh, libraries. And uh, in this uh, establishment phase, uh, we have a kind of technology validation program and uh, uh, this focuses on three application uh, uh, areas uh, uh, with uh, different uh, uh, users covering hospital use, home care devices, and equipment for molecular uh, diagnostics. And uh, uh, these uh, diagnostic devices uh, consist of numerous photonic and non-photonic components that need to be then combined for required functionality. And in MedFab, we will offer uh, first photonics module integration, second fiber optic packaging, and third uh, disposable in vitro optofluidic diagnostics to a level where it is ready for small to medium scale production and then a scalable uh, up to commercial production. And uh, again, so uh, consortium uh, comprises both research organization and those uh, certified uh, companies. And uh, this enables us to have a fairly uh, extensive list of uh, offering in different categories. Uh, and then uh, what is important to point out that when communicating with the customers, it's important to understand their needs and the phase where MedFab can help. And whether it is more in the development or in the upscaling phase. And uh, uh, if the customer is in the concepting phase, uh, then we have capabilities for uh, example, photonic designs with different methods. And those are then connected uh, uh, to understanding of uh, actual fabrication methods. And uh, if we can use then, uh, 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 or if uh, it is more uh, in the upscaling phase, uh, uh, then uh, MedFab can help to make designs for manufacture and then uh, uh, perform the actual pilot line uh, uh, production. And uh, uh, I want to emphasize that uh, uh, even though uh, there are a lot of things inside MedFab, MedFab uh, we can, can uh, do everything alone. And that's why that we are also uh, establishing good networks uh, with uh, uh, other, other uh, EU pilot lines. And uh, uh, we started the development of operational processes just a couple of, month, uh, couple of months ago. Uh, we had a kickoff kick meeting in uh, January. And currently, uh, when we get inquiries, we, we pass uh, those then uh, to individual MedFAP partners. But we are uh, 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 very uh, rapidly developing also those operational processes that we, we really can uh, operate uh, as an uh, uh, entity. And uh, please uh, 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 follow us and uh, launch open calls for the uh, external uh, uh, customers. And uh, this uh, enables uh, early adoption of those uh, new technologies that are, are uh, being uh, developed. And uh, here you can see uh, then uh, the MedFab uh, consortium. So, uh, we have uh, five research organizations and their role is to develop new fabrication techniques and then to support company, especially in research and development phase. Other group is formed by the industrial manufacturing partners uh, that enables industrial level control for the fabrication. That is uh, again, very, very relevant in uh, medical domain. Then we have uh, 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 five companies evaluating internally the quality of our technology. 
and then uh, we have also uh, partners uh, uh, to support this uh, technology development uh, activities and partners for uh, clinical relevance uh, uh, analysis uh, then for project management and then again thanks to epic for supporting us uh, in in dissemination and uh, outreaching uh, and uh, then uh, 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 me and uh, MedFab Consortium, we are very happy to provide uh, further uh, uh, information. So please uh, follow us in LinkedIn or Twitter, and uh, you, you can uh, visit also our website. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, please uh, send also an email to info at uh, medfab.eu. So this is in brief how uh, uh, MedFab is being developed uh, uh, really to support the European industry in me medical photonic medical device development. Hey, Yussi, thank you very much. Very nice presentation. You cannot imagine how excited we are of being part of a MedFab and to have this pile online now in Europe. I'm pretty sure you are going to be very, very busy with MedFab as uh, well. Uh, now uh, we, we society is, is realizing what is important, right? And is to invest and companies are realizing that the, the important thing is to invest in healthcare, right? Uh, so, okay, maybe I can start with my first question. Uh, you have an amazing representation of, of um, all the technologies required and the, the supply chain uh, in MedFab, but of course you had a, a, a limitation no, in the partners that you, can put, you could put together in the consortium no, at the beginning. So you see, what are the companies that you think could complement at some point the, the offer that the MedFab uh, can, can, can give to the customers? What kind? Uh, 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 okay, so uh, I, I would see that, um, uh, okay, we have these um, uh, industrial partners uh, uh, who has this uh, uh, ISO 13485 uh, certificate and uh, uh, they can do a lot of things. Uh, uh, so uh, we have a uh, uh, screen deck uh, Philips table, but then I'm, I'm sure that uh, we will uh, get a, a, a very interesting cases, relevant cases. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure that we cannot cover everything. So uh, uh, the will be very likely need then also to uh, network with uh, other uh, uh, industrial manufacturing uh, partners, both integrator and then what comes to component uh, level. And uh, as I said in the beginning uh, uh, of my presentation that the field and the application, uh, both uh, uh, photonics field and application field, they are very fragmented. And we try to cover a, a big share, but not everything. Okay, thank you. So, okay, questions for you see from the attendees? Okay, so maybe it's a good uh, moment, it's a good opportunity to introduce one of the of the partners of, um, of MedFab that we have here. Uh, so Mariana from Amires. Uh, maybe Mariana, you could unmute yourself and explain what is Amir, what is the role of Amires in, 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 well, in the photonics industry and also in MedFab? Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. So thank you, UC, for introducing very nicely the MedFab uh, project and the pilot line. And also, Amires is a consulting company and a management company. Uh, and their main role in, in MedFab is the management of, of the project and also being support of uh, the coordination uh, partner that is PTT and UC. Uh, support in, in the meetings, in the in, in that everything is going on place and, and in time with all the deliverables that have to be to be delivered and also the milestones that need to be achieved. Also uh, we are working together with uh, with Epic for the dissemination. I mean we don't do the dissemination, we do only the the, the website and we are taking care of, of, of the website and the nature now uh, shared uh, shared drive and shared uh, documentation uh, repository, and yeah, that is the, the main roles uh, for that. Also, um, Amiris is a partner for another uh, photonic uh, project, EU project that is fabulous. So, uh, so we are we are trying to 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 engage into this uh, very. Um, important and, and essential type of, of projects. So that is that is mainly, of course, we have a, a other projects, but 
I think uh, MedFab is a, a great opportunity and we are very happy to be part of this great consortium and great opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, Mariana. And I think you, you already heard uh, Foco that uh, he is interested in forming a consortium. So this is what you, Amires is doing, I mean, in an excellent way. So maybe you can help uh, Foco with that. Uh, it could be an idea. Uh, yeah, that, that we will, if it's, uh, there is an opportunity for that, we, are, we will be happy to always uh, participate in, so, in, 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 in such a, a nice uh, and in, like potential potential proposals. So we have a, a good experience in, in proposal preparation. Uh, for instance, um, MedFab is one of them. And also we, we, we are working on others that are in, ongoing. So, but we will be very happy to, to, to talk about it if, it's, if there is a possibility. Okay. It's also very encouraging to see that MedFab already is partnering with IMEC anyhow. So that uh, yeah. in, the chances any. Yeah, that's that's true for sure. We have IMEC. Uh, it's a very important uh, partner in Medfab. Yeah. Okay. So then, questions? More questions for Yusi. Yes, Yusi. Yusi, let's do business today. Let's do business. The idea for Medfab is to help, especially to help, especially small and medium enterprises. So I talked to to Dominic Cerula, and he's got something really, really amazing in his mind. Truly amazing. You're gonna see the presentation later for details. But for me, it's very important to know how. These companies uh, like Peer Labs, or later you will hear from Octores, from Prospective Instruments, from MW Technologies, how can they benefit? What is the process for them to enter Medfab's customers? Uh, uh, okay, uh, so uh, uh, we are establishing this uh, single entry point. Uh, kind of, uh, uh, we call it the front office. So that uh, uh, even though uh, uh, behind this front office, uh, there are uh, 18 uh, partners, but then for the customer that uh, there's a one desk that can customers uh, can enter and be served. So uh, we are uh, uh, now uh, uh, setting up these operational processes uh, so that uh, when, when customer enters and then the customers don't uh, doesn't necessarily have to see that what happens uh, uh, after that so that we channel all the necessary uh, uh, documents and uh, uh, distribute them the work between the partners but then to make this very simple and clear and fast for, for the customers and uh, we uh, and uh, the first point now is that uh, we have uh, there's this uh, uh, web page uh, and there's this uh, info. You, uh, it's possible already now to send uh, email, and then we uh, uh, respond uh, very very quickly uh, uh, to extend that what is possible now. But you know what Dominic's thinking because I can read his mind. He's smiling. He's thinking, yeah, it's okay. Customers is interesting, but this is uh, a collaboration project funded by the European Commission. Mm -hmm. So is there a way to get certain level of uh, co-finance funding? And I think also Slava is raising the hand. Uh, okay, so uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, European Commission is, is funding the establishment uh, of uh, uh, MedFab. But then this is only uh, for setting up uh, the process. Okay, we, we have a substantial funding and uh, this is for uh, four years but after that uh, 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 we should be uh, medfab uh, uh, should be running uh, alone without uh, 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 external uh, support and uh, uh, we are now uh, okay uh, testing during these four years that uh, can uh, uh, how we can then sell uh, our uh, offering and see uh, wh whether it uh, reaches then the customers and of course obviously that uh, whether uh, there's uh, uh, enough uh, interest then then for us and uh, uh, again uh, we are not the own, only uh, pilot line so of course we are learning from the uh, we we just started we, we are uh, uh, communicating a lot with other pilot lines and uh, uh, learn uh, uh, about uh, their experiences that uh, what is the really the best way to establish this sustainable model slava an expert in bringing in bringing technology to medical slava you have a question yeah um very shortly, one question. We already tried to be um, part of, let's say, MIRFAB pilot line in the past. And when we um, uh, suggested, you know, to equip all 
quantum cascade lasers, uh, infrared detectors for the systems, you know, with our mid-infrared, unique mid-infrared fibers, then we have found, uh, revealed, that uh, any kind of new partner should bring money in. So it will be supported uh, by Brussels only for the members of consortium, but uh, and some kind of benefit, of course, comes from this support. But where, nevertheless, there is no way to get kind of collaboration if we shall not bring, let's say, 20,000 euro to this kind of, let's say, uh, pilot line. Is it the same with MedFab? Uh, okay, yes, I, I know that there are uh, di uh, uh, different uh, models are being used in uh, different uh, pilot lines and uh, the level of uh, support uh, varies. And uh, what, what we have, uh, so we are uh, quite well aware how things have been arranged in different, uh, in other pilot lines uh, who, who are now running or uh, already in, uh, kind of alone with, uh, uh, without uh, support from, from the uh, commission or uh, who, are, who are still in establishment phase, but still kind of a few years ahead of us. And now we are uh, listing pros and cons that uh, uh, what are the experience from those that uh, uh, which is the level of support that uh, 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 should uh, uh, maximize then the uh, impact and uh, bring the uh, uh, full benefit for, for the photonic society. But I, I uh, yet I cannot give a clear answer that uh, what is the exact uh, support level or the ratio. But what will help really to have a clear financial rules of, let's say, collaboration with MedFab in the future, because, for example, the rules for MIRFAB simply uh, block, you know, any kind of interest, you know, to do something together for mutual benefit, you know, that's why I hope it's different with, with MedFab. We are interested. Okay. Yeah. So uh, thanks to, for the feed, feedback. Yeah, we, we are collecting and appreciate all the all the feedback from the uh, other pilot lines and experience uh, working with them. Okay. So thank you very much for this discussion. Yes, I can see Art Photonics uh, in MedFab. Uh, yes, I can see it. Uh, so okay. So let's move forward to the next uh, presentation that uh, is going to be from uh, Pair Labs. Uh, so, Dominique, if you can, if you want to unmute yourself and share your screen and, and tell us about how you go beyond the diffractive uh, limit. We all want to hear about that. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the invitation and uh, your great moderators, both of you, Jose and you, Anna. So this is, uh, this is uh, quite joyful here to sit here and to listen. To the to the active discussion here. Uh, before I start, actually, uh, give me give me thirty seconds because I think actually the question just raised is actually quite important um, because um, um, to some extent um, uh, we all appreciate to have uh, to have a photonics line to be able to produce photonic elements in, in Europe, but the, the question is really how our future programs basically, how, how can they piggyback in a positive sense on MedFab uh, rather than being in the way of being considered from the European Union's perspective as a cross-funding thing. But okay, uh, let, me, let me do the talk first and I'm, I'm, I would be happy to come back on the question side. Uh, so let me share the screen and let's see if that works here. Uh, okay, oh, I have full choice which one. I hope this is the right one, no, this one, this one. Okay, so I hope you can see the screen. And so what I'm going to talk about is a new innovative imaging method. And I've, I've coined the talk making the invisible visible because just it rhymes a little bit. And what I'm going to talk about in just three, four minutes is that we are offering in the only imaging method which can basically resolve and create spatial resolutions of the order of 20 nanometers, but keeping the imaging basically real time at the same stage. Okay, so um, time is of the essence. I mean, we all know that basically there is the other diffraction limit and normal classical microscopy can't resolve below 150, 200 nanometers, whatever, whatever nanometers uh, and criterion you prefer, doesn't really matter. And we all acknowledge that there are a lot of things, including viruses and proteins and, and other systems, which are highly interested, especially for biomedical researchers. 
And uh, we also know that uh, we got uh, three methods or two, two and a half methods, if you like, of the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2014. But all of the methods basically, they suffer a little bit from the delay. First, some of the methods can't really go single nanometer. Um, the stochastic methods like Palm and Storm can do so under certain circumstances, but typically because you need multiple acquisitions of several hundreds or thousand shots to get a good quality image, you can't do that in real time anymore. And this is basically where our new technology comes in. So what we have basically invented, um, we have made a new optical chip and the optical chip for the sake of simplicity and the short amount of time we have in, envisaged this as basically little light sources in an array. And the light sources are subtrafraction limited in their size. And basically the trick is that we are able to address these light sources. So millions of them, if you go for the full field of view. And these light sources now illuminate the sample directly in their vicinity. Well, the trick is, and this is, the, this is always the, the important piece, is how do you actually, how do you smuggle the information um, from, the, from the near field to the far field? And if you use normal optics, you are still superimposed by the diffraction limit. You can't go really further. So you need one trick. And in our, in our, in our uh, invention, actually, the trick is that we can modulate the light sources. We can modulate them basically with any frequency and waveform we want to. And that means we can re-identify the position from which the information stems in the far field by looking into the modulation pattern and its frequency. So basically, just to give you uh, an, a feeling for that, um, this is a, a picture on the left-hand side. You see actually nuclear pore complexes as you see them through a high numerical aperture microscope. And you see, uh, this is A and C, C is the large section, and you don't see much details. And if you do that with pair, with our pair technology, you actually see resolutions at the moment down to 21 nanometers, but there is no real barrier. So what we hope in the next generation, so we just did win the Future Innovator Prize in Ireland. Uh, so we hope we can invest the money in a clever way to actually get better optical chips and also to break uh, the diffraction limit uh, even further. So anyway, so uh, to keep it short and brief, um, so our technique provides spatial resolutions at the moment at 21 nanometers or slightly better. We can do real time, this is really special. Uh, it's a deterministic method. It's actually label free. Uh, the, the image you have seen is actually done with labels, but you're fully free in your selection of labels. And in theory, you can do completely without the labels and it's biocompatible. Actually, strictly speaking, you can piggyback that also to other technologies like Raman spectroscopy. You, you can basically create a Raman mapping uh, on a nanometer scale. However, the problem is, of course, that very small areas from which you take the information and the relatively weak Raman signal uh, need relatively long exposure times. Anyway, so first of all, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to discuss uh, Yeah, uh, now in the following minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is your first ever epic participation, the first of many, 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 because I'm amazed of what you have when we discuss this offline. Uh, just so you know, when you present a technology like this at Epic, you always get the same question. What can you do for them and what can they do for you? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> okay, for, for them it's difficult because we're all coming and at the moment we're coming from the same direction. We're all people who try to drive forward European photonics. And, and having new inventions actually to improve medical sciences typically. I think as far as I see, most of the, the, the projects are of course, as the title says for in vivo imaging. Um, but I, I would need, I, I, would, I would take a lot of help if, if, if possible from people because the design of the optical chip, um, we have designed it with the brute force method using lithography, uh, basically using focused ion beam and other technologies just to make the smallest structures possible. <clears throat> Beg your pardon. Um, but basically, you now the step is to bring this technology into a more mass production scheme. And I'm not sure, and coming back to MedFab, for example, or IMEC has facilities, I'm not sure who is capable of actually helping us in this particular question. And uh, if I now round up my earlier, basically, when I started with the discussion or uh, presenting my talk, the, the point is, to some extent, is I, I wonder if there's a chance to actually talk to, to, to talk to MedFab up front, basically, or to other interested parties to see that we are not creating the same things twice. And of course, the European Union wouldn't like that. But on the other hand, I think for the extreme small structures which we are producing here, this is not really existing right now. So I, I wonder what, uh, if there are any comments on that. 
So Foco and I have been working together for our TNO time, so it's more than one and, a half, one and a half decades by now. And we talk already a lot about breaking the fraction limit for another customer outside the medical market. Foco, uh, did, did that spare labs resonate with you? And what kind of, uh, what kind of help can you provide from the IMEC hat uh, to, to peer labs? What I at least can do is try to connect you to the, the right people within IMEC. I'm not a fundamental uh, optics researcher, unfortunately. I'm just an application person that tries to apply new things in, in medical uh, realm. But if you go through the diffraction limit, I mean, everybody can use that. That is uh, probably your, your problem is not a lack of, of uh, applications, possible applications. It's where to start. And um, I think we, we, we certainly would be interested in, in, with an IMAC to, to talk to you about this. Um, but also, I, I do think that uh, uh, in, in uh, Finland, uh, they also will be interested in, in uh, MedFab. And since we're already partners there, I mean, I, I don't see it hurt immediately if, if both would be contacting you and both would be. But maybe you see... Uh, you see, go ahead. Yeah, yes, uh, th thanks. Uh, so uh, uh, generally, I, I, I would say that uh, there's at, at least a good, good opportunity that uh, some of uh, MedFab partners then could uh, uh, help help you of course uh, then uh, I, i'm sure that there are a lot of uh, technical details that uh, what we need to uh, check but uh, if you contact me then i, I can distribute uh, uh, this information uh, to uh, medfa partners uh, uh, directly or then to ask some um, uh, further kind of uh, 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 info for me that I can then uh, channel back back to you. And of course, if uh, uh, communicating via MedFab, uh, uh, IMEC would definitely also get this information. But uh, may I ask you that uh, uh, what is uh, currently uh, from the fabrication point of view kind of a limiting factor? So is it kind of this uh, upscaling or going from few component manufacturer to upscaled? Or is it there even some limitation in a, a few component fabrication level. Uh, yeah, I, 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 easy. Well, th let me think. Uh, let me thank both of you. I would be interested to discuss that. Maybe we, we actually make a, a kind of an outside thing uh, at, at some point. So we can just discuss about that topic and see actually how far we can go. Uh, just to, just to answer your question, basically, um, that is um, the idea here is that the uh, is my one actually. Okay, I don't know. So the point is actually that um, the upscaling is a problem in the sense that we need to mass produce. So we can we can use e beam lift off processes or directly focus ion beam structuring. Actually, we retouched even with an AFM to make the structures better. So that can be done on a single chip. That can be done on ten chips, but you can't do that on ten thousand of these optical chips. So basically, we need a path and a route to upscale. Uh, and the, the other one, uh, and basically coming back, and of course we are interested in this Olympic idea to be as good as possible. And of course, this is just intriguing and we're very enthusiastic about, we're trying of course to improve our technology. We're pretty proud of what we have achieved so far, but if somebody uh, can, you now basically our resolution is tied to the sizes of the structures. So the smaller we can do these structures at the surface, the better our method works and there's no real limit, uh, but it, it becomes of course increasingly more difficult to fabricate them. So maybe that has answered to some extent your questions and I would be really, I would be more than pleased if you would have time for me at some point to discuss that maybe in a separate discussion. Okay, thanks a lot. I, I think uh, at the uh, uh, for a moment, uh, this definitely replied uh, uh, my, my question. So um, I, I would be then mo most happy to continue uh, this uh, discussion uh, after this meeting. So I, I think we can share then our contact information. Yeah. As I said in the beginning, to ramp up, to ramp up to volume production, Ana Gonzalez is our key person to link the efforts of the pilot lines with the companies like Peer Labs. Ana, anything else that you have for, for Dominic? Yes, I would like to add that, well, together with MedFab and also MirFab that was mentioned by Slava, uh, we have another pilot line, the Epix pilot line, that ha can help you to ramp up production of uh, indium phosphate uh, chips. And we also have uh, open calls and we can, we can help you with the design and with uh, the processes. So uh, just for you to know. Okay. Yeah, that, that, I mean, just to say that this is really highly interesting and that's very important because I mean, you, that's, I mean, I know what you're trying to do. 
I mean, we, we try to invent things on the photonic side and Europe needs a strong ability to manufacture. Basically, this is exactly in line with what Epic is doing here. You are one of the success stories of ACFAST. I would like to say hello to Hugo Timpont if he's watching us. Uh, it's great that you that Epic is helping you towards the next step after ACFAST going to TRL567 all the way to the to the market. And we go to one company that is already there. It's one company I'll really look up to, Skin Vivo. Mike, thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. I all recommend you that you see the website of Skin Vivo and the different tissue images they have there. The floor and the attention of everyone is yours. Thank you very much uh, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to present here today. I really uh, liked the meeting. I'll try to, let me see. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, great. All right. Um, so indeed, I work for Skin Vivo. We are a medtech startup, uh, only three people working for Skin Vivo, and we're focusing on improving bladder cancer diagnostics. Um, bladder cancer is, is quite a heavy disease with a lot of impact on a lot of people. So yeah, here you see some numbers, how many people, 2.7 million people worldwide that are affected by bladder cancer that either have it or had it in the past. And the thing is with bladder cancer, the positive side about it, that if you discover it in an early stage, your survival chances are really high. Uh, a negative side of bladder cancer is that in 50 to 80 percent of the cases the tumors grow back and that means you have to follow up the patients often for the rest of their life to have to come back one or multiple times a year to check if the tumor has regrown and that makes bladder cancer the most expensive cancer uh, from diagnosis to death and then another big downside is is that the current diagnosis of bladder cancer is just not good enough at the moment so what they do, they go with an endoscope with a camera on the tip inside the bladder and based on the image the urologist sees on the screen, he has to decide what am I going to do? Uh, it's a bit thicker, it's a bit red. Am I going to cut it out with the risk of performing a surgery for nothing uh, with all the risks that the surgery uh, takes long? Or am I going to leave it with the chance of missing a tumor? Oh, well, it uh, proves that with the current technologies in 30% of the cases, tumors are missed but also in 30% of the cases, surgery is performed for nothing. Well, at Skivivo, we want to do something about it. And for that, we developed the optical coherence tomography catheter, um, which can look inside the tissue. So I'm sure you all know, but just to quickly explain OCT, you could compare it to uh, ultrasound, but using uh, near infrared light instead of sound waves. So you can look with very high resolution, but only up to two millimeters in depth. Uh, you see in the pictures on the bottom, on the left side, you see our first working prototype aimed at a fingertip. And next to that, you see the cross section of that fingertip where you can see the different layers of the skin. Well, what's special about our solution is that we have a forward looking OCT catheter. So OCT catheters exist, uh, but they're mostly sideway looking, for instance, to look at uh, uh, blood vessels. And you can't use that in hollow organs like the bladder. You don't know what you're looking at. Uh, your working distance changes continuously. So you want to have a forward-looking OCT catheter. And that's what we make by making use of a very tiny um, resonating MEMS mirror that's in the tip. And that's also the core of the patent of Skin Vivo. And in this way, we enable imaging of hollow organs with OCT. So what are we looking for? Well, we're really uh, in a starting phase. We developed our first prototypes one and a half year ago, I think, and we yeah, tested them on feasibility in the lab. They are working, but of course, these were not good enough for clinical tests. So we're currently developing our second generation prototypes that we can use for uh, clinical tests. And we hope to have them after this summer. But of course, currently with COVID-19, we're experiencing some delay there. And two things we're still really looking for is on one hand, um, yeah, the current optical fiber assembly we have, so that's a single mode fiber with a grin lens and a micro prism, is just too expensive for high production, mainly because to, due to the micro prism, um, but also because of the gluing process of putting it together. It's too much uh, yeah, work, work, man hours to put it together. So we're really looking there into a solution because otherwise, our catheter would just be too expensive to, for clinical use. Um, and on the other hand, yeah, we are developing the catheter. Of course, we have to 
connect this catheter to uh, OCT source, to uh, OCT engine. Um, and we don't want to develop that ourselves. We don't have the expertise. We're a small team. So we're uh, there looking into yeah, what companies can do there to make uh, an OCT system that would fit uh, our catheter. All right, thank you. I will stop sharing the screen. Ah, it's already stopped. Thank you very much. A very nice presentation. And you also, you were very, very clear with uh, your needs. And well, you almost need uh, like everything. So a lot uh, of uh, business opportunities uh, here. Uh, so, well, um, any candidate to, yes, I, I know, Slava, uh, please. Yeah, just two pragmatic questions. Uh, so what is the uh, outer diameter of your MEMS catheter? Uh, so the outer diameter of the catheter will be, uh, yeah, 2.5 millimeters is really the max. Uh, so it will be below 2.5. Uh, and one more question. Um, what is your estimation of the target price in the future? It will be disposable? Yes, it's a disposable. Um, and we're now aiming for, or what we think should be reasonable to, to put it together. So purely components and man hours to put it together. Um, that should be around 150 euros. Yeah, very good. In general, we have a high interest to this MEMS mirror if it will be on the tip of our mid infrared fiber or any other fibers, because there are not only OCT uh, methods, there are some other applications where this format um, scanning is highly requested. If we can do with you, for example, infrared endoscope, then we can see tumor on the uh, stomach wall because tumor is half a degree warmer. And we have fiber which is transparent in mid infrared. So let's let's talk uh, after this conference. Very interesting. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, I was also wondering. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I, I was. Oh, okay. I, I was also wondering, Mike. Um, uh, do you already have contact with uh, Geert Smits? He's a urologist in the Rijnstaten Arnhem. And I consider him the best urologist in the world regarding um, bladder, treating bladder cancer and uh, finding methods to improve the quality of life because he developed a method in which he um, does not radically resect the whole bladder in a, in a reasonably late stage, but he keeps what is healthy and he gets the same or even slightly better 50% uh, five year survival uh, of patients. So he is a top clinician and uh, my feeling is always that you need to work with the top clinicians to get the newest technologies in a certain area accepted. So if, if you like to be in contact with him, uh, you sound Dutch, uh, <laughs> he's not far away and a, an extremely innovative guy. Also, yeah, that would be really, really great if, uh, if we can get into contact with him. We, we are in contact with a few urologists, but not with him yet. And that sounds, what you tell me what he's doing, that's really interesting to, to get in contact with him. Yes. Yeah, also with the European Urology Society. And, um, well, Sven, uh, there's, there's also the professional societies there. I, I think I can help you there. Uh, you probably have my email address and, and uh, can contact me. Otherwise, I can mail it to you. Yes, I'll, I'll contact you. Yeah, thanks. Sounds very the, good. The, the last online technology meeting that we have is going to be on endoscopy. So, Foco, could you do me a favor and invite Gert to attend that meeting? Uh, most likely I can. There's only, of course, one thing that we always have to remember. The clinicians usually are already very uh, busy. And at this moment, it is a madhouse with, with um, COVID. Even if your specialism is not directly involved in COVID, uh, there's so a shortage of doctors that many people have are doing shifts on the ER, what they nor normally would not do. But um, when is this? Is the, la the last one of the online technology meetings. I think we have a question from Optic Balkans. Okay. Yes? No, I have a question to uh, Mike. Um, um, do you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Christoph Burda from Perspective. So we're, we're both in the imaging space, Mike. Very, very exciting. Thank you. Um, maybe I missed that. Have you, uh, ha have you thought about um, introducing your um, OCT fiber into uh, a regular endoscope 
like almost like an OEM deal with maybe uh, Carl Stortz, you know, or other market leaders in the field? Uh, that, that would definitely be interesting. So at the moment, our catheter fits in the working channel of, of Cystoscopes. Um, and of course, yeah, I think it would be a great idea to put it indeed as a module in, in endoscopes. Thing is, they would like to see it proven first before they start yes, thinking I know. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Uh, so yeah, it's it, in many ways, it's really important for us to, to do clinical trials with, yeah, we hope to do with the new catheters we, we make. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that would be an interesting option for sure, yeah. Maybe Jose can put you together with uh, that one lady that attended the December meeting, uh, a lady from Carl Stotts. Um, I, uh, I have been in contact with her, but aren't you? Okay, great, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, true, yeah. It's good, good. When, when my job was done. I, I, Anje, you are watching us, hello. Uh, mm -hmm. We have another question from Optic Balsers. Uh, thank you, Jose. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hi, uh, Mike. Uh, I have a bit of more technical question. So you were you were showing a prism assembled with a lens, and you said you want to move away from the prism for cost reason mm -hmm. um, and replace it by a mirror. <clears throat> uh, could, because uh, we we have uh, special processes to make small prisms, uh, which are actually targeting consumer market applications. So you can imagine price wise, uh, that's very challenging, and volume wise <clears throat> as well. So I was just a uh, question if, uh, what, what is the rough size of your prism? And, and I mean, if you are interested, uh, since you have a solution that's, that works and if it's only the cost, um, maybe we can help you to, to find a more uh, cost reasonable solution for you, for your prism. So we, we, I mean, we could always uh, connect and, and discuss this, but just for now, an idea on what, what's the actual size? Of, of uh, it's a uh, half by a half millimeter. So it's <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> okay, you thought it was, yeah, that's... That, that sounds very expensive, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we asked a few, we asked around for a few quotes at a few companies mm -hmm. and it just came to the point that, of course, because you have to polish it on three sides and it's so tiny that it's, yeah. it's cost effectively, it's uh, dangerous or it's, it's difficult, yeah. Okay, but you still would need something to uh, <clears throat> to bend or not to bend, but to redirect the light in a 45 yeah. degree angle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay, so then we, we are going to make sure that you get in contact at, after this uh, meeting. And uh, thank you very much for this interesting discussion. And now we are going to move forward to the next speaker, uh, who is uh, Galit uh, from Iskanor. So hello, Galit. Yes. Hi, I'll just... Hi, can you hear me? Yes, very good. So okay, now we'll great. Screen. Okay, I'll do the share screen. Just a minute. Okay. Very good. We can see the screen. Ah, you can you see it? Okay. Okay. And, and now the presentation mode. Yes, just this one. I don't know. Very good. Okay. For some reason, it's stuck. Okay. Sorry for that. Very good. We can start. Okay. So first, uh, hello everybody. Good afternoon and uh, thank you Epic for this uh, e-conference during the uh, Corona time. Instead of flying, we are staying uh, in the office. Uh, so a few words to introduce ourselves. Um, yes. So iScanor is actually a startup company that came out from OEL Innovation which is a R&D company focuses in photonics and acting as an incubator. Uh, over the years, we had uh, several, um, our innovations yield several companies, for example, Dumoptronics, um, Solar, Iscanor, and others. This lecture, of course, is about uh, in vivo imaging, and, and I'll focus in our skin screening device. First, uh, 
I'll talk a little bit about skin cancer. Skin cancer is the most common cancer in the Western world. About 20% 20 20 of the population will have at least once during their life uh, skin cancer. So we are developing a photonic device for skin screening. Uh, that the technology of the device is actually is uh, it, it contains four independent uh, technologies, and uh, each technology is actually uh, detecting different signs of skin cancer. The device is aimed for a. Uh, to be to serve as a decision support tool for medical uh, staff within the community and not just uh, and uh, in this way we'll overcome the problem of lack of a dermatologist and of course telemedicines and remote diagnosis okay so the in vivo imaging Yes, here we can see a video of the in vivo imaging. Uh, the device is actually can be a first uh, a dermoscope. That's the first. Orders, the colors, asymmetric, and so on. We can uh, detect melanocytes units. You, we can count them. It's actually under the skin, uh, sub-skin illumination. So we can detect features that are below the skin. And here we can see, you could see, the um, uh, optical um, properties of the tissue. Actually, we can follow, I'll show it again in here. We can follow, the film we can doesn't... follow the, excuse me? Look like the video doesn't run or? Yeah, yes, yeah, so. The, the refresh rate is, is not as fast, but yeah, there is something happening. So you can maybe explain us in mean, a bit more detail. We just see, see the change of color a little bit only. And you know what, I'll do it quick. Okay, so the I'll just show it again at the video. Is it okay? Can you see it? We can, we okay. can see it without so, moving. No, it's, it, will really, it will move soon. So we can see the wavefront. So we can actually measure absorbance and scattering of the light within the tissue. And in here, we can see very nicely the wavefront and the absorbance uh, as a result of uh, different features uh, in, the t in the skin tissue. The fourth uh, technology is... Oh. I was muted. <laughs> the first, temp uh, the first, um, can you hear me? Okay. The first um, technology is actually temperature gradient. We have a, a cold ring around the lesion and we can follow the temperature gradient to determine whether there are changes in the local blood flow. If, the if there is an increased blood flow, we can actually, see the gradient is actually uh, faster and the change in the blood in the of the area of the local area is the change in the temperature is actually faster um, our challenges first uh, to determine uh, it's something that's related to uh, maybe wavelengths uh, determine the optical properties of different uh, skin cancers and the second one, which is related to, uh, here to the companies, we will be happy to find a strategic partner for IR cameras, maybe even like small cameras, LEDs, and uh, other parts in uh, our device. Thank you. Thank you very much for a great presentation. We've been following you already for, for two years. Uh, we had the first uh, meeting with you at, at NKT, you remember, in Copenhagen. And um, I can see the, 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 the process, and I also can see that you keep having more and more challenges. You specify the infrared cameras. What kind of wavelength range are you looking at? The S-Wave, the M-Wave, the L-Wave? Yes, just a minute. Oh. 
Can you repeat? Yes, what kind Please, of sorry? What, what wavelength range are you looking for the infrared cameras? Ah, uh, eight uh, to 12 micrometer. Okay, so you're looking for the long wave infrared, yeah. this type two super lattice, maybe yeah. the ecosystem. Okay, so uh, on that, uh, the best person to contact is, is Ana Belen Gonzalez, because she's actually has some money in her pocket to help companies uh, develop uh, solutions for the long wave infrared. Uh, what can you do for, for Gali, Tara Gonzalez? Uh, hello, uh, Galit. Well, uh, we have been already in contact. Uh, I mean, regarding the the Mirpap uh, pylon line, right? Um, yes, we tried the uh, uh, with a discussion over that. Yes, yes, we have been already there. So, well, we, we can connect again and and we can move forward. Uh, so maybe now, uh, yes, we can work. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Galit, uh, you have today companies that make lasers, that make detectors, uh, that make fibers. If you could have a, a, an ideal, an ideal follow-up after this meeting, what would be what you would write to Santa Claus for Christmas? What is what, what they, do I want? Would you like to follow up? Yes. Um, I'll be happy to any company that is uh, working with uh, maybe a. Uh, different uh, kinds of uh, laser or LEDs. Are you looking for ultra fast uh, lasers for CW lasers? Very, uh, yes, but very, maybe we're uh, checking this uh, option uh, of a very, uh, like, uh, yes, fast lasers. Are, we're I have checking. Two, I have two very we interesting not... laser companies here. One of them is class five. Hello, how are you doing today? Hey, Jose, I'm, I'm doing well, Hi. how are you? I'm doing great. Hey, Galit, um, out of curiosity, I have a question. Um, um, so uh, our company is um, in the field of uh, in vivo uh, brain imaging, uh, but um, microscopy based. And uh, looking at your presentation, I'm, uh, I, I would like to know how deep can you go into the skin? You, you said you can see subskin features. Uh, what kind yes. of depth is that? Uh, about two millimeters. Oh, that's quite deep. Because, uh, yes, because uh, melanoma is, uh, according to the stages of melanoma, uh, after uh, below over two millimeters, three millimeters, it's become like stage three and stage four, which is uh, too dangerous and too... Melanoma, you want to find it quickly. So two millimeters is enough for us. Okay, thank you. You know, we also have a very interesting company. It's called Refined Laser Systems. Uh, RLS and my friend Tim is here. Tim, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Hi, thank you. Hi. Um, yeah, maybe we can connect a little bit later to, uh, you can show me or tell me a little bit more detail. So um, we are at Refined Laser Systems are developing ultra fast lasers for coherent Raman imaging mostly, um, which is used by our customers for skin imaging. But um, the, uh, you, you said two millimeters is enough. Two millimeters is actually quite a lot if you want to look into skin. I think this is possible because you're going for the long range wavelength. So I think in Korean Raman imaging, you're more or less looking at 100 micrometer and then you're deep in the skin. Um, so, but it would definitely be interesting to, to check if our lasers could be something that is nevertheless helpful for your project. And as you can you. see, Galit, this is the, the, the board of communication, the board of cooperation. We, nobody has the whole solution themselves. That's why we have a job at Epic to make sure that people engage. And we continue with the program and we go to very, very close for me. And we go to the Netherlands, we go to Cenix. Thank you very much for being with us today, Mark. The floor and the attention of everyone is uh, Van Yao. Hello, you hear me? Yes. Good. Okay, I'll try to share my screen. You see something? Oh, excuse it's me. It's coming. It's now. It's too... coming. It's already here. It's already here. Okay, I'm trying to put it. Full. Yeah, that's. It. Okay, okay so. Here, <laughs> thank you. Uh, hello, everybody, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Epic. Thank you very much, Jose, for inviting me. 
in this uh, in this talk. Uh, so I will talk about Xenix uh, and uh, what Xenix is doing for in vivo imaging. Um, so what is the activity of Xenix for perhaps some people that do not know us? Uh, so we are making infrared camera from short wave, mid wave, long wave, but we also uh, are doing infrared detector for short wave. That means uh, a big, big part of act our activity, the main part of our activity is a short wave. When I say short waves from uh, 0.9 up to 1.7 micrometer with some possibly of extension on both sides. Um, so for short wave, we focus on in-gas, in-gas imaging detectors and cameras. So if you look at what we are doing, we are doing uh, line scan cameras, uh, Okay, in short, in short wave, and we also are doing uh, um, 2D cameras, and uh, in uh, QVGA format and in VGA format uh, with the, the last release in Wildcat and Cheetah. Cheetah is an old one, but it's uh, the, the speed, uh, the highest speed that you can find on the market. So. In in vivo imaging, Xenix uh, provides some cameras for some years now uh, to either detect uh, photoluminescence or photoluminescence imagery. Uh, so here we have some uh, 2D cameras, QVGA 320 or VGA, uh, very low noise cameras, and uh, and. Uh, new one that we released at the beginning of this year, which is the Wildcat, a low noise, 200 Hertz. So it enabled people to get, uh, to detect lower signal, to make accumulation and so on, averaging. And we have another uh, field where we know we are, uh, let's say, deeply involved is the optical coherence tomography, or CT where up to now, oh, excuse me, uh, we propose the, the cheetah, which is a 2D camera, but with the highest speed that you can find, uh, 1,700 Hertz full frame in short wave. Okay, for uh, people uh, that, knew, that know the, the visible, uh, but still it's not so bad, <laughs> full frame. Uh, and, uh, and the linear uh, links, uh, which can run at uh, four, uh, 40 kilohertz line rate with a rectangular pixel, because usually people in the uh, OCT, they prefer the rectangular pixel. So this is what we have and what is running up to now. And uh, I wanted, because the when you proposed me this talk, uh, Jose, uh, it was really a nice opportunity because just today, and it's really by coincidence, <laughs> it is not designed for, but just today we released the, 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 the last generation, which is typically dedicated for optical current tomography. So it's a, a linear uh, detector, linear camera with a rectangular pixel and very high speed and very low noise. So it's really oriented for optical current tomography. So the, the number of pixels is 2048. Uh, so it should improve the uh, OCT resolution. This is the IELTS resolution that exists uh, in, uh, let's say, in the uh, industry, uh, as far as I know. Uh, the pixel is uh, uh, rectangular, so it gives better sensitivity. And it's, by the way, also much easier to, to align um, especially for uh, such long uh, line as 2,000 pixels. Uh, and the frame rate is the highest that exists worldwide. Uh, so it's 260 kilohertz for the full line. So uh, uh, for OCT, we know that the, the, the speed is very important to enable faster uh, scanning, faster acquisition, and so on. Uh, this camera, uh, we also thought about the, the noise, 
and it has a low noise and a high dynamic range. And the, the goal of this is to get a better signal to noise ratio because again, what we uh, understand by talking with people in uh, OCT is that they need high resolution for sure, uh, high speed, but also a very high signal to noise ratio. And okay, you're, you're for game, so it's very flexible. So uh, for me, it's the opportunity to, to show this, which I strongly believe can help and can make a breakthrough in the, in the short wave OCT. Uh, so basically that's all. What we are looking for, what we are offering is, okay, okay our expertise in short wave and uh, in short wave cameras. And what we are looking for is partners in uh, optical current tomography that we could help with this kind of product and especially this new product, the Manx Rectangular. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you very much, Mark, for this presentation. It's a very nice uh, product. Uh, okay, so, but uh, if we think, uh, okay, this is done. I mean, you, you already released this super uh, good camera, uh, but now about the next product, uh, your next step, what are the partners? What are the collaborations uh, in order to, to fill up your possible gaps in, in the supply chain? So what, what kind of collaborations are you looking for? Okay, so again, the, the kind of collaboration for us, it's, let's say it's quite clear. Uh, we are a, a technological point of view, trying to improve always the resolution sensitivity, okay? And the speed, that's the, the, the main parameters we can work on. So the noise, the speed, uh, dynamic range, uh, and the number of pixels. So now the, the question is, what is the trade-off we have to develop to uh, do the, um, let's say, the, uh, the good product that will help people? We do not want just to make a five legs cheap. Uh, <laughs> cheap, excuse me. So we want to really do something that can help and can be useful. So what we are looking at is people in this field that can tell us, okay, we have tested this, we are using this for the moment. Okay, it's good, but for our next generation, that, that means the, 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 our partner, the next generation of our partner, we would need this more at this level. And okay, this is perhaps very nice, but I don't care. I want you to focus on this, understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, what you need are, are the comments of system integrators using your product? Yeah, yeah, we, we are just a, a simple uh, camera maker. So we, we make something that is integrated in, in a big system. And uh, okay, it has to, perhaps the, perhaps the people will tell us, okay, uh, it's already great enough, we'll just make it smaller. It's not so easy, but <laughs> okay. Or, or hey, I need more of this. And this is what we need. Okay, great. So, okay, so comments, suggestions from the system integrators in the room? Okay, so if not, maybe it's a good uh, moment to introduce uh, Miguel from uh, MW Technologies. So Miguel, maybe you would like to explain uh, how can you, can you support the industry? Can you help uh, the companies in this room? Yes. Um, so thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, nice to talk to you again. It has been some time, unfortunately. Um, so I hope you all are well uh, during these times. So yes, we are a, a fiber laser company. So the projects we have in the medical and the, the imaging uh, for medical is more related to OCT and photoacoustic imaging. So for OCT, we have swept sources and uh, we have broadband ASC sources as well. And uh, most of the products are customized according to customer requirements. So we don't do um, much, uh, so we don't compete as much with SLEDs, which are cheaper than, uh, than uh, fiber stuff, but we tailor things a lot. And same with the lasers for photoacoustic imaging. So we work in the nanosecond range and uh, the flexibility in pulse shaping 
or pulse suite is normally um, requested for some, from some customers. So this is where we are at the moment in this type of markets. Okay, very interesting. Uh, Foco from IMEC, uh, I think you were requesting um, uh, lasers, pulse lasers, uh, right? It can, I mean, the technology of, um, of Miguel could help you with that. Yeah, maybe possible. Um, what, what we don't only need is lasers, we also need lasers in this application, at least the one I showed, cased, uh, with a very homogeneous light field. So um, it's more than just the laser. We, we also want to have the, the beam expander and you can have those, but usually they're quite bulky. And uh, we don't want to have anything bulky or heavy on the headset. So that is at the moment the reason that we didn't use laser yet. Although we for fluorescence, for instance, the, the characters of, of the laser is much more interesting because you have a very narrow band in which you can excite and you have very good blocking filters tuned to the lasers. But the homogeneity of the illumination is a problem. So it's always a trade-off. If you were uh, developing a headset, uh, things are much more difficult than if you're developing, for instance, um, a big surgical microscope, which is a, on a big stand, because then one kilogram of extra mass, well, you just make some more counterweight. But here, the counterweight is the head of the surgeon. So, so um, but nevertheless, yes, um, we are looking for better light sources uh, that have a lot of power in a small housing, but a, a un uniform, homogeneous um, say about this field of Ill illumination is needed as well and when it comes to when it comes to pin shaping when it comes to uh, to actually using lasers in different applications i look up to arfanov is one of the epic members that actually has helped epic a lot on bringing different parts of the puzzle together into different application fields sebastian what do you think of the meeting so far and which companies do you think we can connect afterwards for future collaborations Okay, so thanks for uh, giving me uh, the opportunity to talk with you. Um, yeah, so Alphanov is uh, basically dealing with the, the, let's say, optical components and, and fiber components, and uh, we are developing also lasers. Uh, so that's why we are uh, interested in what happens in the, the health, uh, uh, in the health uh, field right now. Uh, we are also uh, trying to develop some multimodal microscope based on, on you know, um, combining different modalities. And, and that's why I'm interested in, in maybe hearing people here uh, about what they think about, you know, combining, for example, OCT and uh, Raman spectroscopy or coherent Raman spectroscopy. So th these are what, what we are interested in, uh, finding the best way to, to combine those techniques uh, all together uh, and, and see what kind of, of um, let's say, collaboration we can have. Uh, of course, we really need to have the, the end user requirements uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, let's say, uh, happy to, to be able to, to talk also with clinicians and, and to, to be able to translate the, uh, our technical expertise into a, a real technical uh, stuff for, for clinicians uh, specifically. And, and, and so far, yes, we are interested in, in the people who, who talk here about, uh, you know, uh, or the OCT people. Yes, there's something we are, um, let's say, watching, not to do a uh, me too OCT system, but to implement those, all those OCT in our stuff, uh, in, our, in our optical systems. Uh, Sebastian, did you, know, did you know Miguel Melo, uh, CEO of, of NW Technologies before this meeting? No. Because one thing that you would be amazed, before we go to talk about the different integration of uh, things on a fiber, you would be amazed that actually NW Technologies is very good at, at, the, at the pulse shaping. Yeah. That's something that we had discussed with different people at Alphanov for LiDAR yeah. applications. Yes. I would like to understand a little bit on the on the imaging market. Miguel, uh, what, the, what kind of things uh, NW Technologies is different in the sense that you have such an amazing technology for the pole shaping? Yes. What do you I do especially confess, in this market? Yes, I must confess that I don't know in much detail the, the application and how it's it's its impact in the application. So what, what I know is that um, we have customers that really um, ask for that and we give almost free shaping and they use from Gaussian to pre-distorted pulses or even sequences of pulses in the same burst that are then repeated in time 
at a given uh, periodic frequency. Uh, and the advantage is also that we, we control the amplifiers that go in front of the laser in such a way that um, any pulse shape can be given by the customer. So they can really have a huge flexibility uh, in testing um, in their systems, our laser. So, and we can give from nanoseconds up to microseconds or even milliseconds uh, time duration. So that, that's the flexibility. I think it's the most important that we can offer to the, to the customers. It's flexibility in, in our lasers. All right, uh, we're going to talk later in the next Q&A. We're going to talk later about uh, different incorporate, in incorporating different process, different systems into a fiber, Raman and OCT. We, we want to, Sebastian, I want to move that because that's something that Slava has a lot to say and I think it's better to do it after his presentation. Back to you, Anna. Okay, thank you very much. So, well, let's, uh, let's move forward with the next uh, presentation. Uh, that is from Thomas uh, at um, Optores. So, Thomas. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Hello. So, yes, uh, if you can share your screen. Okay, very good. We can see the screen and now we can see the presentation. Maybe you can put in full screen. Okay, very good. So, you can start. All right. Hey, thanks for the invitation. Uh, it's good to be part of this meeting. I'm Thomas Klein. I'm CEO and co-founder of Optores, and uh, we are working on optical coherence tomography. And we uh, claim that we have the world's fastest OCT solutions. And let's have a look what uh, I mean by that. So we've already seen a couple of uh, uh, OCT technologies uh, and applications here in this session, which is always great to see. Um, I think currently most people use OCT with speeds of around 100 kilohertz, maybe a bit slower. And there are some new applications uh, that claim they have ultra fast OCT. And well, you can always debate on what ultra fast is. A couple of years ago, the 100 kilohertz would have been ultra fast. Now it probably rather move to 200, 400, or 800 kilohertz. And uh, our technology is still a bit faster than that. We uh, offer uh, OCT at up to three megahertz sweep rate. And um, well, we do that by having various different components that all very different modules that all work together to get to this high speed. Our key technology is the, at the bottom left here, it's the, uh, a swept laser. So we're doing swept source OCT with a wavelength swept light source. That's our unique light source that we developed uh, which uh, uses the uh, so-called Fourier domain mode locking or FDML in short uh, technique, which uh, really allows us to sweep at up to three megahertz sweep speed. Then of course, at these really, really high speeds, you generate lots of data. So you really need to be careful when you acquire the data, handle the data. Um, even a single copy of this data can be too much to handle even on, on fast PCs. So you really need to be really, uh, 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 precise uh, and know what you do when you uh, try to manage this, this data. We then use GPUs, so graphics cards for processing of the, uh, the OCT data. And we can process uh, many OCT volumes per second. And I will show in a second what that actually means. And then also you need to take care of the whole system. So you need to uh, have the whole scanning, the synchronization uh, really well done so that you uh, can actually benefit of the high speed. And then finally, uh, we also do visualization uh, of the data. And we can do that on a like a standard OCT view, so uh, such as P-scans or fast views or, or 3D views. And we can also couple that to stereoscopic displays and then also, of course, to augmented reality or virtual reality headsets, since the data is already 3D in OCT. So it's just a question of, of rendering it properly. Um, here's just a, a demo of how, how that looks. Uh, it's a video again, <laughs> but it's just to, to get an idea. So on the top left, you see an OCT B scan. That's a standard uh, OCT view. On the bottom, you see bottom left, you see a, a, a fast view. So that's the top view of the OCT. And on the right, you see a 3D view. So here's just a human nail fold. And the cool thing with the high speed is that this is live and, and real time. 
So you can acquire this kind of 3D data with any OCT system, of course, typically with the slower systems, it takes you a few seconds. But since now we are so fast, we don't need a couple of seconds, but a fraction of a second, and we can acquire and render uh, many volumes per second. And then here's actually 20 volumes per second in which if you uh, don't, don't share your screen, uh, I assume actually gives a really smooth uh, experience. And uh, well, the nice thing is that all this is uh, real time. So the B scan, the, the top view and the 3D view are all well, from the same data set and you can display as many B scans or different uh, on fast layers as you want. All right. Um, the question is what do you do with that speed? So it's always nice to go fast, but what, what's the actual applications? And um, well, we are focusing on the OCT hardware and software. We are not a medical device company. But there's a couple of things that, uh, where, where we think that the high speed is really uh, nice to have. One, of course, is when you want to uh, acquire and want to scan very large volumes, very large areas that takes really long with slow OCT, with the fast OCT can be faster. That's nice for ophthalmology, also in endoscopy. And it's also really nice for the new functional OCT methodologies, such as Doppler OCT, OCT elastography, where you always need to acquire multiple points, uh, uh, the, the same point in the volume multiple times. And then of course we have this, what we call live 4D, which is what, what I've shown in the previous slide, where you, are, where you show these many OCT volumes uh, at the same, uh, well, live and in real time. And well, one uh, application that, that immediately comes to mind is like surgical guidance, where you typically, where uh, you want to, to look a bit inside the sample and you can really benefit from the nice 3D view. And also for robota assisted surgery, that's really nice because, um, well, you have just have more than, than single B scans that you can use for your, your image processing and it gives you much higher accuracy. And then the other thing is uh, when you have handheld OCT probes, well, it depends a bit on the application, but uh, as soon as the, 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 the area to scan gets a bit larger, it's also really nice to have this high speed. And uh, well, of course, in general, if you acquire more data, you can generate uh, better medical outcomes, but it's uh, really dependent on the application, uh, uh, what, what people need the speed for. All right, that, that's for my slides. And now I'm uh, happy uh, to hear your, your questions. Thank you very much for a great presentation. I'm amazed. I'm amazed what Dr. S has been doing in the last years. So we've been interacting a lot in different events. And I see also that you've been following up with many of the, of the companies that you have been meeting at the events. And that's what it's all about. So today you get the standard question. What can you do for them? What can they do for you? Yeah, that's, uh, I love this question. So uh, well, what we can do, we can do OCT <laughs> and we can do really fast OCT. So if you need really fast OCT, we can go from light source to the kind of whole OCT engine OCT system. And of course, what we need is partners. So OCT system itself is nice, but nobody or only few people just need a bare OCT system. People need to integrate it in, for some application. And we, we're looking uh, for, for companies, research institutions that we can partner with to, to really uh, make use of that speed and, and put it into a product. And the next presentation is going to be about the head of clinical efforts from prospective instruments. So it's going to be in that particular uh, path. But I want to first go to Michael. I want to go to the Netherlands. I want to go to Skin Vivo because she knows this market front and back. Uh, we are talking about the need for ultra, ultra, ultra high speed OCT. This is what Dr. is bringing to the market, like ultra fast photonics OCT. What do you think is the, the, the market pull for this? Well, first of all, I think that what Optus is developing is really cool. Uh, we've been in contact with them already for more than a year. I think it's like a year ago we visited you in Munich, uh, actually, and uh, connected our catheter to your system. So we have been checking there what's possible. Um, the thing is that, yeah, we have been a bit discussing if ultra fast, if that would be a good match with Skin Vivo, since we need fast but not ultra fast. So that's still a point uh, we're actively discussing, actually. Um, but I definitely think if you go towards yeah, 3D imaging or if you want to image full organs with OCT, then yeah, you need this kind of speed because real time is really important, of course, for, for doctors to see what, what they are doing. Um, 
when they have to make the diagnosis. You don't want to look at it afterwards. You want to see it in the moment you're looking at the tissue. You want to be able to see what it is. Um, that's what makes OCT so cool, I think. So, yeah. Let's ask the doctor. Dr. Viriga, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, what is the market uh, for this? Ultra not a medical doctor, huh? Ultra, ultra, well, you are the doctor. doctor, I trust the most in the world. What is the ultra, ultra, ultra fast application for OCT? Well, um, Micah has, has been talking about the bladder case, which is for recurrent inspection. Now, one of the things that also is very important for bladder to, to see whether the cancer is coming back is that you check the whole bladder. And that is difficult because checking the whole surface, you have to verify that somehow. I can remember there is a... Um, a great principle of scanning uh, with a very quick uh, spiral movement of a single fiber uh, there. But also if, if, if you have a traditionally positioned uh, cystoscope, you'd like to remember all the places that you have inspected and put it together in 3D. TNO has been doing that also for a few years ago, experimenting with that, and that, that works. But you, have, you need some speed to uh, keep the, the time that is the medical specialist is busy doing these recurring scans. Sometimes you have to, in the first years, you have to come back every half year, and then it's every year, but still it's, it takes a lot of, of time for the specialist. So you'd, you'd like to have a very fast process of sweeping through the bladder, making sure that you have every surface, every part of the surface, and that the computer can com combine this very quickly. So speed is interesting there because speed means time. Throughput means uh, cost for the healthcare. If you have to do this very slowly, it's more costly. Before we go to prospect prospective instruments, which is one of the start of the show today, I want one of the key companies that we have in Epic to introduce themselves. And Berion, I really love your detectors. How are you doing today? And what kind of things can you do for this community? Hi, this is Bo Collins from Emberian. I'm a product manager for our Visvir sensor technologies. And what we are doing is uh, image sensors which cover both the visible and the shortwave infrared, infrared range. That means from 400 nanometers up to 1800 nanometers. And we are soon extending that for the first products, which will be commercially available by the end of this year or very early next year, it will be 2000 nanometers. And for a longer term activity, we are also looking into new materials, which will further extend this to two and a half microns. But for that, I cannot give any time estimations, but that's something we are in parallel also looking. And very um, is one of the success stories that we have in Epic, and they have been making such a big impact on the on the graphene side. If there are companies who want to help Emberion, they also help me a little bit because it's one of the ones that I, I love the most. If you have a challenge for this community, what kind of challenge would you give them? Well, kind of, I'm participating into this meeting because I read quite a many research articles kind of showing the potential of sphere imaging in medical domain. And I would like to hear your thoughts about this, that what is the potential of sphere in, in this domain? That would it improve the classification accuracy or penetration into tissues or what, what do you think of sphere imaging? Well, when you talk sphere imaging, I talk Mark Laribé. Mark, <laughs> how did you see the market for medical growing in Senex actually ramping up very, very quickly? Yeah, it is, it is ramping up. It is ramping up, but uh, the, the, the problem uh, that we have is the same as Amberian have. Is that we are a camera manufacturer. We are not system and uh, integrator and either user. So it's very difficult. And we are also starving and, uh, and uh, looking for this kind of information. <laughs> but definitely, yes, it, 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 is, it is working. Yes. Fun. Fantastic. We have a clear, good introduction to our next speaker, Prospective Instruments, the head of clinical equipment of Prospective Instruments is going to talk to us about the rest of the supply chain and how we can all help each other to help them. The floor and the attention of everyone is yours. Yeah, thank you, Jose. Thank you very much, Epix, for um, um, inviting me and also, you know, for, for organizing these uh, really brilliant uh, online meetings. I think this is very important in these days. Um, thank you for the effort. 
I'm, uh, I'm talking about prospective instruments today. I'm, I'm Christoph Böhler, the head of uh, clinical diagnostics. My background is, please bear with me, I'm not a physicist or an optics engineer. I'm a life science person, uh, you know, biomedical chemist. Um, so I'm interfacing the, uh, what we develop here into the life science space. So it's all about a... Um, I think you have to press Control L to go to full screen. Oh yeah, thank you, sorry. Uh, yep, that's a good idea. And uh, what? What? What I show? Is it okay now? Can you see it? Okay. Um, wh what we have here is a, uh, a you know a multimodal uh, microscope, which is um, you know as you know the industry has been around for like ten years or more. Uh, but we're going to be hopefully the first one that puts that into some sort of a serial uh, device. Um, which, which contains, um, as shown in, in, in the sketch on the right-hand side, um, the following technologies. We have, a, as light sources, we have a femtosecond laser developed by the founder of the company, Lucas Kreiner, who is a serial entrep entrepreneur and a, and a you know, femtosecond laser specialist. Um, yeah, femtosecond laser and also um, LED source, five wavelength. Um, continuous wave uh, LED source, and then we have like cameras and PMTs for detection. So all this is in the scan head, as you can see on the lower picture also. And we have a controller unit, which is um, which is combined with an umbilical. Um, you know the uh, the whole purpose of this multimodal um, imaging uh, device is basically combining a couple of um, uh, modalities like, um, you know, uh, SHG, THG, uh, two photon and three, uh, potentially three photon excitation. Um, and, and that combined even with, uh, you know, more dynamic modalities like, um, like um, you know, coherent Raman and also FLIM. Uh, the beauty of this is it's label free. So we don't need tissue preparation. Biological tissue doesn't need to be stained. Uh, and fixate it uh, as it is in, in histopathology. Um, we have, um, you know, mosaic imaging, uh, stitching, so we're scanning over the sample. And, um, you know, we have an epi detection in backscatter direction, which, which is very um, space limiting, if you will. So this is how it looks like, basically the scan head, um, you know, it's, and, and I, I, this is a pretty unfocused picture, but it, it's really beautiful because this is a, one of our business partners and customers that just without even asking us, uh, puts it from, from his lab at, um, at his um, you know, company into his home office without even asking. And he just moved it, put it in the car and um, put it on the table and uh, plugged it in, switched it on and it worked immediately. So that, that's, that's pretty, um, uh, pretty, let's say unique. Uh, that's why, and the reason for that is uh, because of the optical path that is made up in a special way in, in that scan head. Um, just two pictures here for demonstration, a pollen and a neuron uh, made by S uh, second harmonic and uh, uh, two photon excitation fluorescence. Um, so what can we do with this? Uh, we have um, applications in oncology research uh, currently, and then the future is um, in clinic use. Uh, we believe that we can be in the operating uh, theater. Uh, people put the, the biopsy sample without any further, um, you know, uh, work onto the, the device and get a get an image in seconds uh, to def to define tumor boundaries, um, tumor microenvironment, um, and the same applies for neurology. And then in dermatology, we have um, a clear need detected in clinical research companies that do uh, work with, uh, with the pharma industry and also medical doctors to investigate skin samples and also even um, in vivo imaging. Um, what we also envi envision is an endos endoscopy solution um, that we can connect our device with, uh, with uh, an optical fiber laser and, uh, and then just do, um, you know, endoscopy imaging. Um, and further ahead in the future, we also aim at looking at molecular and, and, and molecular phenomena, uh, for example, drug target interactions to see whether a drug is 
uh, bound to a protein. Um, and um, that's definitely, um, you know, visionary, but I think we, we can get there. And all this will be um, done with the help of um, AI, image processing and deep learning algorithms. Uh, the, the customers and our partners, they can, they can basically uh, decide what they want to have in their, in their box, if you will. Um, a few things are must-haves, definitely the red ones, maybe um, SAG, THG, and two uh, Photon, uh, as well as Flim, and maybe one Raman source. Just two uh, quick slides on the, um, on, on, uh, from the literature. This is a, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, this is a collagen, this is a um, basically metastasis, oncology metastasis uh, imaging. You have in A, you have a collagen in a, in a healthy sample uh, and just below you have a metastasis and you can see how the collagen in um, um, digitally colored in, in, in green is distorted by the tumor or by the metastasis. And, and then you have cytoplasm um, in red next to it, fluorescence, a healthy sample and below you have um, a cancerous sample. And if you do the overlay, you can see quite well how the metastasis is really digging into this collagen. Um, another example is the, um, uh, the, um, the dermatology space. Here you can see a, a sebaceous gland with a hair follicle uh, with, uh, marked an F in the middle of, uh, of, of this hole, if you will. And again, um, you know, uh, particles, nuclei and membranes and the overlay gives you a really beautiful picture. Um, last slide here. Um, this is to show you uh, what the future can be. Again, label free. So that means you don't have to put fluorescent labels on your sample, which is basically, as we know, uh, changing the picture, right? And in, in the true sense of the world. world. And um, we, have, um, we have here two ways of how it could look like in the future. This is the um, um, a device that can be in the um, operating theater where you put your biopsy sample on top of this um, um, little device on rolls and, 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 and it'll, um, the microscope is in the, is in, in the box. And, um, and then you have a monitor and you can look at this in seconds as I show. And uh, on the right hand side, you can see, um, you know, the future will be basically uh, connect uh, through a fiber coupling, um, a laser based uh, fiber um, optics, and um, hopefully we can do um, in vivo imaging um, through endoscopy. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, um, questions, please. Thank you very much, Christoph. I mean, it has been quite impressive. Uh, so, okay, for this future that you have been uh, talking about, uh, what, I mean, what is your next step? Uh, how do you want to see the next generation of your systems? Uh, faster, uh, smaller, uh, more accurate? Uh, so yes, uh, what are you looking for? Um, I think what we're looking for, to be honest with you, is, is I think faster is, is is not an issue at the moment. We're looking at um, you know uh, maybe pulling up uh, the laser wavelength to make second harmonic and third harmonic more, um, let's say, more powerful. Um, so that's that's a laser physics issue that we can resolve. We're getting there as we speak. Um, so we're currently at uh, 1,030 nanometers, and um, uh, in order to be um, in, in the visible uh, spectrum, we need to be a little higher up for second harmonic and third harmonic. So that's, uh, that's developed as we speak. Um, the device is finished um, for research. I think um, what we need is really um, like uh, business partners in the medical space, like university hospitals, uh, research driven hospitals um, that, um, that help us to develop that further, right? Okay, so then a uh, comment, suggestions for Christoph? Uh, yeah, well, maybe your device can do, of course, a lot. Eh? Your, your technology offers a lot of functionalities. Yeah. And what you are looking for now is something that makes money for you. <clears throat> so a minimum viable product that at least will give you an income stream. Um, maybe the uh, forensic institutes might be good to consult. Okay. For institutes, they have always the need to combine multiple ways of looking at a sample. You know, they want to do non-destructive research on a sample because this sample might, for instance, prove somebody guilty of murder and, and you 
you don't want to mess with that. You don't want to stain this if it's not necessary. And, and it's, it's small samples and you need to get any clue from that. Usually these institutes have reasonable budgets to do things and they are able to sometimes finance one of a kind products that because the functionality you're offering is quite high. So my experience in, in medical, if you want to do multimodal imaging, which I've, it's always been my dream, by the way, to make a big database of different yeah. this way. Um, we should have met 20 years ago when I had a lot of budget to do that, but I've <laughs> stepped away from that part. But uh, still, um, these forensic institutes, they might be very interesting for you, especially if you, for instance, go for a European project or whatever, because every country has at least one of one forensic institute and they have reasonable budgets and if you solute, make a solution for one of them you can already maybe s s sell a small series of these equipment so it becomes a more or less a, a kind of a product but in a in a customized way for each okay well thank you very much that's really good advice um, um yes and we are in, a, in 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 we're applying for two uh european union projects at the moment but we have not thought about the forensics institutes so that's actually a good idea thank you very much okay, okay. Uh, as for pathology then to them eh? we um, uh, will remember carlos will remember that we've been in uh, erasmus mc where the pathologists and the surgeons work very close together and, and looking on digital pathology and that is definitely in hospital um, to uh, to communicate with if you're looking about digital pathology. Uh, wh which one is that? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. Erasmus MC. Oh, Erasmus, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Rotterdam. Yeah, exactly. There is uh, uh, Gerbin Puppel, I think, uh, yeah, came, came exactly. up in there. Right? Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, other comments or suggestions for Christophe? Uh, okay, so then I am free to ask uh, Jussi uh, from MedFab, uh, what do you think? Do you think we can uh, help Christoph and prospective instruments, uh, helping them with their uh, developments? Uh, okay, so uh, where MedFab uh, can help, uh, I, I can see that uh, when it comes to uh, putting a, a system together and there's a lack, for uh, kind of a fabrication or integration uh, technologies. So this is then something that uh, uh, I can uh, distribute uh, the potential needs then to MedFab partners. So uh, th that, that is basically the corner that the MedFab is, is established for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. Uh, we, 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 too, we like we take this into consideration definitely i mean if we especially if you go into you know uh, production uh, large you know numbers and things like that yeah thank and you Christoph, and christoph any other challenge uh, challenge for the supply chain in order to to the the device? um you know i'm as i'm more the life science person i i of course i do see everything that goes on in the lab we to be honest, we are pretty well off at the moment. Um, this is also because we make the, the laser, it's, it's homemade basically. <laughs> That's why we can make it so small and also so cost efficient that we didn't talk about cost and I don't wanna, wanna talk about prices here, but I can only tell you that um, this is really way, way uh, less expensive than what's out there on breadboards these days commercially in terms of multimodal platforms. We really want to make this available um, to the wider audience, and I'm thankful to these comments, um, uh, you know, forensics and, and other things. So that's definitely where we want to be in the future. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, more comments, suggestions. Okay. So if not, uh, thank you very much. A very interesting uh, presentation on technology. Uh, let's move forward to the next presentation. It's my pleasure to give the floor to Slava from Art Photonics. Thank you. Please, Slava, if you want to share your screen. Uh, just a moment. Shouldn't be a good see. I have a problem. I have three screens, you know, so. Three screens. A second. <laughs> Move it. Okay. Now I think it will be full screen. Um, and back. 
Okay, can you uh, wait a second? No, no, then you have to go down here to the green button, the share screen. Yes, and then? No, but we cannot, okay, now we can see something. Okay, okay, you can start. Very it good. comes, yeah, okay. Uh, great, uh, thanks for the chance, you know, to uh, tell you a bit about fiber optic imaging because uh, every doctor has a dream, you know, to look through the body and see everything. But the most of uh, technologies described before, are, let's say for some kind of depth, uh, millimeters or what else, you know, not through the whole body except uh, X-ray, what else. We try to help to the doctors to look uh, with endoscopic approach. We <clears throat> produce fibers, which simply covers a very broad bench uh, range from uh, UV up to mid infrared. And uh, in result, what we do, uh, okay. Uh, it's even not from us, but you probably knew that from two, uh, last 10 years, endoscopes, which are normally used uh, three times more often on the market. Uh, endoscope market is three times bigger than laser market. It's about 40 billions on the planet. It's already changes. So instead of, let's say, endoscopes with um, tens or thousands of fibers, it can be single fiber with a scanner. And in result, you can get the pictures, you know, which are, let's say, very high in quality, uh, while the endoscope itself is based on single fiber, much smaller in diameter and much more flexible. So uh, we are not making endoscopes, but we are trying to approach with our unique solutions, which are based on uh, mid-infrared fibers. And these fibers are covering the range uh, from four to 18 microns, uh, which means, you know, uh, including the emission of the black body at room temperature. As you know, our body emits maximum around eight to 12 microns and our fibers are transparent in this range. It, uh, fibers are extremely flexible, non-toxic, uh, and um, uh, open the opportunity to make infrared fiber optic bundles or maybe single fiber with a scanner endoscope. Uh, single fiber approach was already realized and patented by company Securus. Um, and uh, you see here uh, one operation, which is against arrhythmia, simply to control heating of the area in heart when it's um, a radio frequency ablation process running with a catheter you should know exactly the temperature of the process, not to go to extremely high temperature. You must be limited. So <clears throat> this catheter is based on rotating mirror and it goes up and down. So um, due to the lack of time, I will not show you the video, but this is um, infrared image on the esophagus wall, which simply is recordable during the operation to stop temperature uh, before the limit. <clears throat> we also do spectroscopy. Uh, it's our major efforts to detect margins of tumor. And we combine uh, these fiber optic probes up to four different methods. So this is fluorescence. In this case, it's near infrared absorption and uh, we can also do Raman and mid-infrared. And when we combine methods like fluorescence together with near infrared, we can improve dramatically accuracy and precision to detect where is the margin of the tumors. In this case, it's not just a 2D picture. Quite often we are forced to use a kind of fiber optic needles, uh, but nevertheless, it gives us a chance to measure not only two dimensional picture on tissue surface, but also to do it at some depths. Our project, for example, with our great colleagues uh, in Rotterdam, uh, we already mentioned, you know, you already mentioned Gerwin Popel, so with company Rivert, Erasmus Medical Center, we develop some kind of fiber optic needles with outer diameter of 160 microns only. And this needle goes in tissue, it's ex vivo imaging. 
goes in one centimeter depth uh, within one second. So, and then we can easily distinguish tumor or non-tumor because in a tumor there are much higher concentration of water compared to lipids. So that's why it's more or less like three-dimensional imaging of, um, let's say, in this case, resected uh, piece of tissue, but nevertheless, it helps doctor to know where some traces, some malignant tissue is still left after resection and to make radical uh, resection to remove completely uh, tumor uh, to prevent any kind of, let's say, second operation, which is a very rare case. Mostly it's used like uh, chemotherapy or uh, uh, radiation therapy, which is really dangerous for the health, for immune system. So that's it. And I hope I'm in even faster than promised six minutes. It was great. It was great, Slava. Okay, so very good. So, well, now you can tell us um, what do you need in the, in the supply chain to, to help you with your development? Uh, we need partners because we are still a B2B company. We are 22 years in business doing fiber optic bridges between any kind of spectrometer, any kind of, let's say, uh, sensor, you know, so that's why we need uh, partners who simply develop system. In this case, for example, for Raman, it's company Revert uh, in Rotterdam, but we are open for much more, uh, let's say, partnership cases. Okay, maybe this is a good moment. Christoph, uh, from Prospective Instruments, uh, what do you think about uh, this kind of system? Yes, I think I was. Just, thank you for for um, um, putting me into into the discussion. I was just about to uh, to ask. Uh, I mean, we and again, I'm not the, the 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 right person. We need to talk to Lucas on that one. Uh, but of course, you know, fiber optics. I mean, we are. Uh, it's our goal to combine our device technologies. You know, we 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 have this all developed in terms of controllers and, uh, and, and the rest of it. So we just need to, um, to uh, put that interface and maybe your fiber is, is, um, is, is, can be combined with our device. Um, and I will check this with Lucas, okay? Yeah, no, it's very interesting. Let's, yeah. let's yeah. do it together, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank you. Great. Very good, very good, that sounds great. Yes, I will make sure that you, that you get the emails, okay? And also uh, regarding um, Slava, uh, regarding what you were talking to Juicy, uh, your collaboration of Medfab um, with Medfab, would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, I would like to know a bit more about the rules, you know, because uh, in general, uh, a big piece of our interest is in biomedical diagnostics. And uh, again, Medfab looks like a team, you know, which simply try to develop not only complete devices, but also methods of applications. So we are highly interested like a fiber optic component vendor. Okay, yes, the thank, thanks for this uh, info. And this uh, again, this uh, uh, fiber optic um, uh, miniaturization and, uh, and especially towards a medical device domain, this is one, one important part in, in Medfab and uh, I'd be then happy to communicate after this session also with you to really check in, in more detail that what are possibilities for the collaboration. Okay, we'll be in touch with you after. Okay, okay, right. Right. Yeah, we will make sure that you, you, you get in touch, okay, after the meeting. Thank you. Okay. And thanks. So, more comments or suggestions for Slava? Well, the... Um... Uh, it was very nice to see that you uh, displayed uh, one of the articles of Eric Seibel, who, who has this spiral uh, endoscopic uh, single fiber endoscope, which is still intriguing me much. And I, I always dreamt about being able to point and shoot. And that might be becoming uh, possible with your fibers, because you may be able to give a CO2 laser access to the endoscopy range. Is this doable? Can you fire with a CO2 laser endoscopically? 
Now, we do have cables as well, you know, for um, CO2. We collaborate with coherence. So we have uh, cables produced not only for CO2, it's also carbon monoxide lasers and endoscopic version. Yes, uh, it's, there are some challenges, you know, which are related to the contamination of the distal land because then, you know, it will be some burning. So, <laughs> A well-known problem, but uh, nevertheless, uh, my father said there are no problems without solutions. So we should work on it. Okay. Thanks for posting. Very much. Okay, great. So well, I can see a, a good number of collaborations here. Yeah. Um, yes, going on. So okay. So any anyone any more comments for Slava? Okay, so if not, let's move uh, forward with our uh, last presentation, uh, but not least. Uh, so, uh, Zoe from Modulite, if you want to unmute yourself, okay. If you want to unmute yourself and share your screen. Okay, hi. Thank you for your patience for waiting for this. Let me just share my screen and okay. I hope you can now see the screen clearly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So thank you for inviting us to speak. My name is Zoe Uloniemi, and uh, I'm here to introduce to you our like Modulite's uh, solutions for in vivo illumination. And um, so as some of you might know, some of you might know quite well, we are a semiconductor laser company from Finland and we have our own semiconductor laser fab there, which basically means that we make the lasers from the beginning and we don't just design those kind of, let's say, um, pretty boxes around the lasers, but we do them from the beginning. And this makes us a truly vertically integrated medical laser manufacturer, which is actually quite rare. And uh, we've been around for 20 years almost already, Obviously, I haven't been with the company for so long, but uh, since then we've become supplier to over 10 pharmaceutical companies all over the world. And one of the recent ones to join our customers is Bausch & Lomb, who are a huge ophthalmic drug company in, uh, in the US. And they chose us to be their exclusive supplier for the next generation AMD laser that we hope to launch later this year. And basically we have a very long track record of making all kinds of lasers. The wavelength range covers from 400 to 2000 nanometers. And we have all the certifications for making uh, medical lasers. We have been audited by the FDA and we have lasers that have CE mark. And so, so we're I would say a pretty nice partner to bring uh, medical lasers to the market. And just to give you an overview of what we do in the medical uh, field, this is quite a busy slide, but it might give like a nice overview to our many different products. So we do both therapeutic lasers and then provide illumination solutions or light engines for diagnostic applications. And our interests of fields include oncology lasers that can have active treatment monitoring. So they can be cloud connected and take uh, spectral measurements real time. And then we have the mentioned ophthalmic lasers that we have designed to be iPad controlled as the FDA recently approved those as control devices. And then we make different kind of uh, plate illuminators for cell viability experiments, drug screening, optogenetics for the in vitro research. And then we have different OEM laser modules and tools for in vivo illumination for preclinical work and also these different kind of light engines for clinical applications. There are quite many different products visible in this slide, but maybe just to give you an example of the work that we do, we usually start with uh, new applications by providing something that is easy to use by the end user, just for 
kind of application testing and feasibility studies and that can look something like the black rectangular boxes on the on the left side of the slide and then maybe later when the customer is moving towards production or has fine kind of finalized the final product design we can move towards more compact uh, easier to integrate solutions we do also play around with the different kind of optics when we deliver solutions where let's say good beam quality homogeneous illumination field or good uniformity of the spot is needed i actually chose one of the pictures this is our uh, beam shaper uh, spot spot uniformity is shown here and as we discussed earlier these are usually a bit more let's say bulky we haven't done anything too miniaturized with the beam shaping optics yet but we have worked with uh, for example how would i say vr or ar glasses and illumination solutions there so those are very tiny and miniaturized but that's certainly something that we are interested in and as I know that this question will come, come up later, what can we actually offer? We can offer different kinds of illumination solutions and also medical device design and manufacturing from lab to bedside. And we can have the full solution on the wavelength required and the form factor required. And we actually like to think of, about things that we tailor the laser to your application instead of you adjusting the applications to kind of fit the lasers that are available. This is quite exceptional because we can actually have an impact on the laser design process from the beginning. And of course, we can offer a long-term manufacturing partner and we are also looking for a long-term customer relationships. This was in a very nutshell, the modulite offering. And uh, in case you have any questions, feel, please feel free to ask now or send me an email later. Thank it you is so indeed much. a very nutshell because uh, you could talk about this for, for, for days. Uh, so many things happening at Modulite, one of the companies I really look up to. And I would like to say hello also to my very good friend, Peter Yushman. I'm sure he's, he's watching us. Uh, when it comes to photodynamic therapy, Modulite is really making a big impact in this, in this world. Is there a few words that you could say about that? And also what kind of partners would you like to have after this meeting? When it comes to photodynamic therapy, we are quite actively working on making it more effective in a way that we can monitor where the light goes. And that requires spectral measurements. So we are keeping an eye on partners that could provide us some kind of a miniaturized spectrometers or on-chip spectrometers. That's a concrete thing that we could benefit of. What wavelength range? Uh, our usually somewhere between for the certain application that I have in mind, that would be somewhere between uh, 600 and 800 nanometers. And what kind of resolution? I would need to check. It's not that specific, actually. It's Picometers, just the... nanometers. Nanometer would be fine, pretty much. <laughs> All right. So hey, that's we... not the issue. We can definitely make something integrated on a chip. I, I, Foco is smiling. We have done. We have been talking about the spectrometers on a chip for, a, for a many applications, and this one could be uh, one of the highlights. Let me introduce you to some of the potential partners or friends. At least uh, Thierry from from Belgium, Lambda X. How are you doing today? Good afternoon. For those who don't know, Lambda X is one of the key companies yes. in Epic uh, in the in bringing technology for the microscopy market and also for the space. So really, one fantastic company. Uh, what kind of uh, what can you do for them? What can they do for you? The standard Epic question. Yes. So uh, actually, the, for the in vivo imaging, um, we are um, we are not there yet. However, we have um, uh, we are working on um, on the imaging. For for quite a while and for uh, with um, an hyperspectral camera which uh, actually can um, 
could play its role in the in the in the in the in vivo uh, imaging, uh, doing a, a real, well, I would say fast enough, not real time though, but fast enough uh, fluorescence imaging, and um, also um, this has been uh, proved to work for um, global Raman imaging, which are applications, which are our technologies, which are uh, looked around for the in vivo imaging. However, we have not given the opportunity to, um, to, to test this. And, um, and uh, so that's one, one aspect of our activity, uh, I would say product-oriented activity. And on the other side, we also can uh, provide engineering services. We do many uh, custom spectrometers, uh, which might not, uh, well, which are not um, cheap integrated, but uh, which work on uh, optical um, uh, technology that we can make uh, quite compact and robust to bring it to the uh, operating room. So that's basically how I can uh, uh, our activity. And, um, and uh, well, uh, I don't know if that's uh, answer questions. Or, but yeah, I mean, always. So you remember that uh, we organized this event at a hospital location every, every two years with the medical doctors in the room. Needless to say, following up on Focus argument before, it was not possible, of course, to have medical doctors today here. They have far more important things to do. However, uh, this year, the medical meeting will focus on system integrators, and that's why we go, we go to Philips. And we're going to have yeah. a meeting there with the key companies that are looking for integrating the different technologies into the future systems. I think we already have a confirmation, I think, from Stratus. Uh, we're working with Siemens. We already have uh, Philips as well, of course, confirming our hosting. So it will be the right place to discuss this. It's been a really great meeting, but, uh, but Slava, for me, when I talk about all the different challenges that we've been discussing today, it seems to me that the biggest challenge is in the integration at the tip of the fiber. I know uh, Art Photonics is really focusing on that, and you put a very nice slide in which you combine reflectance and Raman, uh, but uh, what kind of technologies, what kind of challenges do you have in the supply, do we have in the supply chain to have a, a, a Raman plus OCT camera at the tip of a fiber? Mm, I can say that uh, OCT is of course very uh, powerful method, but uh, to be honest, we were not so deep uh, in use of fibers uh, for that particular method, because to be honest, I. I'm not sure that this market in, vo in volume is enormous. I knew doctors using that, but uh, maybe for the whole Berlin, it will be only, I don't know, 10 to 20 places where it's used. When I compare this kind of, uh, let's say, uh, market niche with endoscopy in general, just to give you two figures, the whole laser market on the planet is about 15 billions. The whole endoscopy market is 40 billions. So that's why if, for example, the methods, uh, as it will be Raman, fluorescence, mid-infrared, um, uh, will be mid-infrared, will be used endoscopically, then just imagine if only 1% of the doctors on the planet using everyday uh, endoscope for illumination and visualization of internal organs will start to use uh, something which will give them additional information about molecular composition, about, let's say, changes in a tumor or ulcer or what else, you know, on the uh, wall of esophagus, uh, what else? 1% from 40 billions. You know, so it's half a billion already. And this market is much, much bigger than the whole OCT. I'm very sorry. I, I, I wouldn't like to, how to say, to neglect OCT advantages, but I am trying, I am 66, you know. I would like to grab, you know, a piece of market, which is, let's say, a thousand times bigger because we have unique fibers which cover the range. So that's why presentations today, for example, this uh, mini MEMS mirrors, extremely interesting. Then the concept of which was already realized with a scanner for single fiber endoscopes can be used for mid infrared. And then we can see, for example, I showed you a couple of, one slide. Yeah, a tumor is half a degree warmer. And we can see it, you know, an esophagus wall or on stomach wall or 
rectum, you know, just because it's a bit warmer. So, and this is easy, I should say. Problem that we couldn't find partners for it. You know, we are searching for years, trying to make it, but I can say the picture I showed you was really um, a result of, let's say, Securus Medical, which was acquired by Boston Scientific. Mm -hmm. Boston Scientific spent 10 years for this endoscope, $70 million. And they terminated this project now because of Corona. They simply lost 10 years and $70 million. So just because they are in trouble. And this is a company which is 10 billion company, uh, one of the key players. So that's why I, I wouldn't like to suggest that we must surrender. We must fight always, you know, but then, you know, for us will be perfect scenario if we shall be united with infrared uh, array manufacturers like company FLIR, what else? And really do spectrometer, um, sorry, endoscope with this kind of mini mirror at the end or scanner. Uh, can be prism as well. That's why we should, uh, how to say, make this kind of search of puzzle pieces, you know, to make excellent Lego device. Indeed, in the field of end endoscopy, for what we're discussing with the different endoscopy manufacturers, that the challenge is really on the micro optics. Uh, and that's why we, it's going to be one of the focus points on the on the meeting that we have in, in uh, later on in, in endoscopy, which I can't tell you exactly the date. The online technology meeting on endoscopy is the 17th of June. Yeah, yeah. So don't miss it. We're going to follow up on that. I look and look at my friend Samir from Lisa Laser. I'm very impressed with the different products that you're bringing in the medical market. Today, you heard a lot of information from different partners and potential, potential uh, suppliers and customers. Uh, what kind of... Uh, takeaways you have from this meeting, what kind of follow-ups would you like to do? Um, I will definitely uh, follow up with the, with the hyperspectral imaging. Uh, the first, I think it was the first uh, first talk. Uh, and I think I will also have a talk to uh, Modulite. Uh, I'm really very impressed by, by the complete uh, yeah, uh, production line which you presented. Uh, and I think there are some uh, very interesting wavelengths uh, for uh, our lasers, which can be maybe combined. Uh, and even if you have any uh, two micron uh, modules, we are also very happy to test them on, on tissue and then share this information with you. So, yes, so you we are very open. We are super busy here on Wednesday. On Wednesday, so in two days, we have the EPIC online technology meeting on hyperspectral imaging. And I can already confirm NKT, IRIS, VTT, Lambda X, uh, TRE, of course, Cenix uh, uh, as well. So we're going to have a really nice lineup. Delta Optic and Film, of course, IMEC, VTT. So it's going to be a great, great uh, meeting. I'm going to go uh, to Alfan of Sebastian. Out of this meeting with so many companies, so much information in two and a half hours, what kind of learning points have you had and what kind of follow ups would you like to do? Yeah, uh, the idea is that I would like to follow up with Boom, the company uh, uh, where we can have some collaboration, further collaborations. Um, it's it's the, the point, maybe I, I should have uh, said that before, but uh, really we, we can design some specific lasers and we are able to integrate also uh, different lasers. It's more than one shot laser. So if you have kind of prototype one shot stuff to do special, uh, special, combination uh, yes we, we can work uh, uh, together and and uh, yeah that that's it for me it has been a really really great meeting very active that's how i like it team was a with time looking at me team how did you find the meeting how kind of cooperation would you like to do i am very very big fan of your team our laces hi thank you um yeah i also think that it was a very great uh, meeting. Um, I will definitely uh, follow up with prospective in instruments. Um, we have already been in contact with um, Lucas because we are providing ultra fast tunable sources for coherent Raman imaging and they're building a really great microscope. So I think there really is some potential for fit there. And um, maybe uh, I will also um, write you, Cherry, from Lambda X because I just look at your homepage and see that you're doing really interesting um, custom made microscope developments where maybe also our lasers could be a uh, great fit. So I think it gave us great ideas here today. Thank you. For me, it is it is just amazing how many how many potential follow ups uh, can be done in just two and a half hours. And while I was talking to you, I was chatting with the people who were asking me questions, and at the same time, I was taking notes. And these are my notes today. These are my learning points. So first, we started with the presentation from IMEC, and then you see there was the clear chance of helping lots of companies, and there was the communication with doctors and the road 
track the road path to the market. And I think that's one of the things that UC has to help the companies in Europe towards accelerating. It's making things fast. It takes too long to put this device into the market. And I really want, I really want Peer Labs to be one of the first example for this acceleration. So this is the challenge for me, UC. You have to help Dominic. Uh, for me also one learning point is the advances that we are having in the resolution of the imaging and it's quite impressive. The breaking of the refraction limit 21 nanometers and he can go lower. He can go lower than that. Uh, we were talking about low noise, high speed, dynamic range. We, we saw really new presentation, really new technologies being been presented these days. And when it came to the ultra fast laser, the challenge was really on the tunability and on the beam shaping. And we heard the word compact when it comes to beam shaping, things that we normally don't look at in any application fields and something for us to be learning and cooperating. The biggest challenge, as I said before to Slava, for me is the integration. And with that, we need to work more with the endoscopy manufacturers and the integration of micro optics with the specialty fibers. Uh, and finally, uh, I was really happy to see the ultra fast OCT real time and two application fields that are growing very rapidly which are the urology and the skin i would like to of course uh, thank uh, prospective instruments for in my mind it was the best presentation today and that's why i borrowed some of the key points that you selected for positioning the photonics in this fantastic market which is what made my afternoon i would like to thank you for a great great meeting and ask you three things the first one stay home it's only a few more days until the whole virus is over. Second, stay safe and take care of your family. And third, come on Wednesday, join the epic meeting on hyperspectral imaging. Until then, be epic. See you soon. Bye-bye.